yeah, we back, y'all know. 2024, we on fire. We on fire, yo, bro, what up, KK, yo, no, what up? We it's locked in. It's happening, it's happening, man, we locked in. Locked yo, in. Yo, yo, what's up, man? We locked in. Yo, what up, Mo? You on mute, bro. It's all it, man, we locked in on purpose. We locked in on vision, we locked in on faith, we locked in on uniting, we locked in on bringing that fire, we locked in. Yo, we locked in, man. Yo, what's up, man? Salute to everybody in the building, man. Y'all already know we got a live one for y'all tonight, man. OGs is in the building, the West Coast, the East Coast. You know what I'm saying? You know, we got Compton in the building. We got Brooklyn in the building. Yo, this is like no other. Y'all got to share this. You got to, this this is the one, you heard? Share. Yo, yo, talk to him, bro. What's up, bro? Talk to him, bro. Share, like, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like thing on the way in. Let's go, man. Talk to him, K. Yeah, 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 Let's get this thing going, man. Y'all know what it is. Y'all be supporting all this other nonsense out here, man. Support the real. I mean, we drawing lines. 2024, remember we said that before, about these lines that's being drawn. What's real and what's not, man. You keeping this thing authentic and all all the way progressive, man. All the way progressive. Yo, if you're coming in the building... Hit the like button. It should be no reason why you're stepping in the door without hitting the like button. I mean, I'm just keeping it all the way 100. If you are in this live right now, hit the live, the other, the like button. Hit that button. Do not play no games. Don't come in. Don't peek. Don't want to come in here a little and leave. No. Hit that button now, bro. This right here is classic. It yeah, may have back never up. been done on this level. There's, there's been times when individuals have tried to come together, but on the level that we're talking about, I seriously doubt it. So I would advise everybody to please hit the like button before we even get going, man. Hit that like button. Make, Mikey, make, make sure the make sure them likes go up, Mikey. That's, I ain't even saying no more right now, man. No, the likes, they like, the likes. You got official prison talk, official prison talk in the building. Shout out. Yo, let them know what's going on tonight, man. Let them know how it's going, man. We got the we Yo, got I'm the sure. we got the OGs in the building, man. You know, respect to them, man. Sure what's the all all <laughs> Everybody out here working to make a change, working to make a difference, man. We got a great show. We got a great show for y'all tonight. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we're gonna start out west. You know, them, them brothers gonna give the history. You know, we got we got bounty hunters in the building, you know what I'm saying? Fish you, you know. Let them know who in the building, Mo. Talk to yeah, the people. Yeah, 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 Hoover in the building. We got the, Yo, Hoovers. It's, it's, we got the big Hoovers in the building. It's, it's crazy because who each one of these individuals are by themselves, right? By themselves are 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 big, right? Their contributions, their sacrifices, what they've done, they all have a huge story by themselves. So to have these brothers together, you know I mean, on this platform is I just got to understand how how I got excited. I don't really be getting excited about you. <laughs> like, I got excited about it because I understand the power of this. You know what I mean? When 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 brothers of this magnitude can come together and build, can share their stories together, you know what I mean? And look to actually unify and build a unified front, man. Because you know I'm saying, because at the end of the day, this is what this is about. I just a story. We give you a story so you can learn because you got to learn your history. You got to know your history to know where you're going. I mean, that's always that's always been a thing. All right. But once that's actually learned, now it's like that gives you that gives you your GPS. Now, you know, where you're going now. Like, all right. Oh, all this was done. All right. You brothers moving like that. So now that gives you direction. Like, all right, yeah, I got to I, I, I got to move. I got to get locked in on my purpose. You know what I'm saying? I got to get locked in on what's. What's really putting work in? You know what I'm saying? What's really taking care of the community? You know I mean, like I got, I got to get locked in on that. Oh, he's the best three man. Yo, we yo hit that, own. hit that, hit that like button. I'm seeing that it's over a hundred people in the building and 77 likes, man. This is legendary, man. I don't know if y'all understand what's happening here. We got, we got Compton, we got Compton in the building. All right, we got Watts in the building. We got. South Side Jamaica Queens in the building. We got East New York in the building. We got like, Big Herks. We got we got we got we got Fort Green in the building. You dig what I'm saying? Like we got old school legends in the building. When I'm talking about old school legends, when I'm talking about old school legends, I'm talking about individuals who really paved the way. I'm talking about individuals who really put this work in. And I'm not talking about just in the negative sense. I'm talking about 
some serious heavy hitters who are doing a lot to transform the lives of not only individuals in their communities, but individuals around the world. We talk right. about serious people. You pulled up, hit that like button, man. I ain't saying no more. That's it. Straight up. Yo, so, you know, without further ado, we're going to start introducing the panel of the guys we got in the building. You know what I'm saying? We're going to start. We're going to bring the we're going to bring the elders up. We're going to bring the OGs up. And, you know, we're going to let you know who they be. You know what I'm saying? Here they come. Here they come. We got a few more coming in. Yeah. All right, here we go. Big Whack. What's up? Me yeah. and Corey and Lorenzo. What's up? Yeah, what up? East Coast and West Coast, East Coast you know, and West we Coast. Nation. We yeah. nation. East, East Coast and the West Coast. We nation. You heard? Mm -hmm. What's going Yo, so, on, man? Talk to the people, y'all. Um, Yo, introduce so, yourselves, man. Y'all can start. Y'all can start. Um, you know, y'all can start. Yo, big whack. Let the people know who you are, man. You muted. You muted, big whack. Un man, unmute yourself. Mute. You got you, you you got your microphone muted, whack. Lorenzo, you 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 good? Go ahead, Lorenzo. All right, my bad, my bad, my bad. Go ahead, Lorenzo. You got it, brother. You got it, big white guy. Right, so, all right, so that's that's my bad. My apologies uh, with this technical difficulty, but um, out here on the West Coast, um, in the music industry, um, in, in some parts of the street, I'm known as Big White. Um, so I did almost thirty years in prison. Uh, so, you know, I'm out here on the streets now. I'm uh, giving back to my community and uh, kingdom building. And uh, so that's what we're doing right here with the East Coast, West Coast thing. We killed kingdom building, brother. Right. Back. And I'm, 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 I'm uh, ecstatic that you guys uh, have me on. And uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you too, big bro. You know, we appreciate you, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, look, my name is Lorenzo Murphy, Elvis Murphy. They call me Big Zone in the Streets. Uh, I'm bringing a lot of education. I'm talking about the new AI movement. I have a proclamation that I actually had on my, we have us a new holiday on June 10th. It's called the 21st Century Civil Rights Reform Proclamation Day. Just like they have International Open Up Day and all this old stuff where we have a new holiday, not Juneteenth Day, June 10th day. We can take the power of what we're doing with We Nation, all the brothers, the Crips, the Bloods, the whoever is about positivity, to make change, to really have something to bring to the table. It's not about building, which it's not about building together. It's about having something to bring substance to the table to make you a value of your community. You have Absolutely. to be a necessity. You have to be a necessity of a community by bringing something to the table. We build it as what we have together. You know, I do national speaking. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, um, I'm really about the education. That's my push now. Changing the mindset of our individuals, brothers. I don't care if you blood, crip. You know, I've been, I was from, I was game banging at 12 years old, 1977. So that's a long time ago. When I was to call myself game banging, it was more easier. What no killing. Crips was being called young blood at the time. You get what I'm saying? That's how the game was. Um, and it's about educating the minds, resetting, planting seeds. Showing them no, not saying, bro, you need to change. When you go to the community, when I go to the community and I ask a youngster to change, I have to have something for him to try to change. So that's what I bring. I bring the element of change. You got to bring the things. And when you talk to the youth, you got to have something. You got to show them what you've been through. So that's who I am. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I'm an original, I'm an original freeway boy from the real Rick Ross crew. I was second in command up under Rick Ross in the 80s. You might have remembered me from American Gangster on BET, the series and other little documentaries out there. So I'm about change. I'm about us being human beings as Americans in America, not the black man, not an African-American. The only way we're going to get the money is being real with ourselves as an American. So that's what I'm bringing to the table. All okay. the time. Okay. You know, I'm on board with that, though. That's a, that's that's right. a fact. That's so, right, so, bro. so. And, and 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 next next up next up is we're gonna go from the west to the east, man. Man, dude, let us let us let us let us know, man. Introduce yourself to us, man. Let us know who you are, big bro. Please everybody, my name is Man Dude Warrior. Um a lot of brothers over here in New York particularly um know me because a lot of them was up north with me. I did 32 years in prison. And um a lot of brothers was in my classes and we was in the yards together, we was in them boxes together. 
So, uh, and for the most part, no matter where I was or where I, where I was at at the time, um, uh, 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 self-empowerment was always a thing for me. I always wanted the, the, all the men around me to be warriors. Like, you know, I'm talking about warrior scholars in every way. I, like, not only we we was we working out every day, busting out a thousand push-ups and a thousand jumping jacks on shower day, we was also busting down whole encyclopedias, battling with law work. Like we did, we, we played games with, our games was picking up a book, reading a chapter. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> when we played Family Feud, it wasn't those stupid ass questions. They was questions about our history, our culture, you know? So, and I made it fun, you know what I'm saying? Like so many of my homeboys tell me that, yo, it's kind of crazy to say, dude, but you made, when we was around you, you made every day in prison fun. Why? Because even though it's the same monotony, every day is the same routine in prison, I'm not waking up to the same shit. Every day I'm gonna make something different. We're gonna do something different today. Every day. Okay? And my thing is always going against the administration. Anybody that's trying to oppress me, my people, they always made it easy for me to unify all of us together from bloods to Latin kings to crips. I bring everybody in. But like I said earlier, before we came live, Whenever the police always give me the opportunity to make my ally, my enemies my allies. Because inside prison, they bust all of us down. They don't give a fuck what flag you waving. So I'm going to the leadership, and I tell the leadership, whenever you're ready to move for your little homie, you let me know, and me and all my people going to move with you. If the leadership don't move, their little homies don't want to be their little homies no more. They want to be my little homies now. Because they know they come messing with me and my people, and ain't let nobody touch you. Not only is that your own, even the oppressor, the real enemy, the one who's telling you bust it down and spread it open, we busting them down. That's what <laughs> so that's what I get the warrior title for. It. And I educate you with not just that focus on who your true enemy is, but I'm gonna give you some books and I'm gonna make you read some shit. And I want you to give it back to me like you teaching it to me, not like I'm teaching it to you. All right, because I want you to get it in your head. A lot of times when dudes be speaking to a certain audience, they want to use all these theologian words and shit. But my model was always been there. I want to speak over your head. I want to speak into your head. All right? And that's only giving people self-empowerment by making them re realize who they truly are, who you, what, what power you really have to overcome. Because Mikey B, Moshe, we did decades in the box. <laughs> all of us got ten, over, over 10 years in the box at one shot. That's the beginning of our bid. We started our bid with 10, 12, 15. I just, my first 16 years of, in, 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 of my 32 years was in the box. From up north to Rikers Island. I didn't even do population like that. So, so much stuff that we don't been through, a lot of things that I've been through before them, I not only do pave the way, to me, a lot of it's a tragedy to so many other people, but to me, I find the strength in that. A lot of things that in prison, a lot of the advice that I gave dudes where I was like, yo, just rub some dirt on and keep moving. When you're around that type of environment, only way to get dudes to move forward is to talk to them tough like that. Is to let them know you're stronger than you are. Because you got mad drama going on inside there. Mad drama going in there with mad people dying on you, mad people leaving you for dead. So you, <laughs> it's like you, get a, you create a, a, a bond in there. Because why would you think all of us that know each other for the last 25, 30 years Plus years, we all came home and linked up like this. We all feel comfortable around each other. Dead ass. Because I seen him at his lowest. He seen me at, at my lowest. I seen him when, when he was, when, when things was, was breaking up. The brothers that all of us was inside together. Certain things that they was going in their life when they ain't had nobody to talk to. We was the ones in the yard or on the gate or sending the kite. and say, yo, brother, you can handle this, man. You built for this. And that would give him the energy, just enough energy to move on and move forward and get stronger. You know what I'm saying? So education definitely is, is the key. But you can't be talking to people like you can't be talking to people like you out of time. Yo, yo, I want me, big bro. I see, I see that the other big bro just pulled up, man. Our brother, man, from Watts, Hello. man. It's, it's not, none other. I see you frozen a little bit, man. None other than Jay Burton, man. Free Jay Burton. Yo, yo, big homie, man. Shout it out, man. What's up, man? We love you, man. Shout out, Jake. I ain't seen this since the last time we was all together. All the time. It's my comrade right here. Y'all got a little static. Y'all mute yourself while Jay Burton. Introduce yourself, please. Yeah, talk talk to us, Jay Burton. What's up, big bro? Let them know who you are, Jay Burton. Free Jay Burton. What's going on, bro? Let us know who you are, man. Where you from, man? We can't hear you, Jay. 
We can't hear you. We can't hear you, Jay. Nah, we can't hear you. Got to perhaps you might you have to put your mic on. Put your mic on. Yeah, his mic on, Big Whack. But but for whatever reason, I'm, we can't hear him. No, Jay, go out and then come back in, homie. Yeah, you might have to go out and come back in. Yeah, in the meanwhile, yeah, we can uh. Yeah. yeah, until and that's big bro. In the meantime, I see Shaquel just pulled up, man. Salute, salute, salute. Yo, salute, salute. Quell, man. Yo, in, introduce yourself, big bro, man, and, and let the brothers know, man, who where you from, man, who who you are, big bro. Well, my name is Shaquel. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Um, 57 years old. I've been around for a while. Um, I started banging on the island 1994, going into 1995. Um, I acquired a, I acquired a, a set of positions over the years, and um. All I want to do is do the right thing, man. Came home, helped the youth, uh, worked with the program for like almost four years. And um, that's about it. We'll get into more of that um, in the discussion, I figure. Yeah, yeah. Now, nah, we, right. we, we is, yo, thanks for that, Quell. Thank y'all. Yo, Jay, you, you can speak, bro. You, you, you can be heard right now, big bro. <clears throat> Everybody know, man, Jay Burton predicament, man, but. You know, we hope we hope we're able to hear his voice, man. But if not, then you know we're gonna have to speak on this behalf. Y'all but can hear me, Jay me. probably go out and come back in, come right? Real bad. Anyway, okay, so yeah, yeah, anyway, you see, yeah. yeah, right. So hope, hopefully he'll be able to rectify that. Hopefully, man. So listen, absolutely, we, absolutely. And, and so, the, well, the, the reason we wanted to bring everybody up here because one, we wanted to show a show of unity amongst like-minded individuals, individuals who have paved the way. From both respective coasts, in 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 all intents and purposes, that's just the honest, honest like, to the truth. I'm just being honest to y'all. You know, everybody on this panel is respected. Y'all been through the trenches. Y'all been through the struggle. Um, to some extent, we all know or, or heard of of one another through mutual acquaintances and things like that. But for the most part, we realize that all of you guys have a unique story to tell. Um, that's one thing. But we also wanted to like dispel a lot of myths about this whole East Coast, West Coast thing and put those of us in the room who've actually been through stuff to be the to be the, the ones that can sit down and, and dispel any confusion that might be brought about as a result of individuals who would who would, who would love to see more individuals in, in, engage in a cycle of senselessness and, 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 and foolishness. But and the third thing that we wanted to do was to, to give something back to the youth so that there could be a history lesson so that everybody can actually learn some stuff from this and they can see that we can get up on the panel and have an intelligent conversation without individuals yelling and screaming. But you got individuals who have really, who really been there, yeah. been there, who really laid the groundwork down, but who have also, you know, elevated themselves from where they once were back in their youth. Um, and we we decided that in order for us to be able to come come forward, we have to be able to go to those individuals who are part of a lifestyle where where it owes its origins to. Um, a lot of us always talk about, you know what I'm saying, that Africa is the, the birth of civilization. And we all know that to be right and exact. It ain't no doubt about that. But when it comes to a certain culture, a certain way of living, as it pertains to whether it be um, for, uh, for, 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 for Zoe or whether it be for Big Whack and so on and so forth, for Jake Burton or what have you, that lifestyle, as it's been the philosophy of it, that's something that started out West. So what we want to do is we want to give respect to the individuals who are who are living that lifestyle, who live that lifestyle, and allow them the opportunity to speak, so to help provide some clarity regarding things that we might not have clarity on, and then we can bring it on up to individuals who haven't been putting the work their whole lives, but to provide more clarity about who we are over on this coast and ultimately bridge that divide. Because the goal is to unite ourselves. At the end of the day, forget all that other stuff. The whole thing is about us coming. Um, but I'm gonna start off with either Zoe or, or Big Whack because you know you guys are, are definitely the elders. Um, let, let us know. Like I know you guys are, 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 are bumping them streets of Compton and stuff like that. Speak to us about the origins of where the from from your experiences and from what you have um, internalized. What's the origins of the gang subculture that we that the world has come fascinated with from where you guys are from? Okay, uh, I want to just start. Go ahead, Wack. I was about to tell Zoe. <laughs> you can go ahead, but uh, uh, from 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 my perspective, from my knowledge, and from my understanding, um, it began 
ass. I'm talking about the uh, Pyro and the blood. Uh, they began out of uh, as a resistance to the Crips who were coming and taking over people's neighborhoods. And the, the Pyro's um, you know, kind of band together to protect the neighborhood. Uh, probably the reason why you don't see, uh, you know, those blood neighborhoods in, in, in South Central Compton and Watts are still the same size for decades, right? <laughs> because you know they was in the protecting the hood because you know the Crip was a was a was a monstrous force and they was coming and that's another reason why it was so many Crips and, and, and quite a few Bloods. But, you know, and our mentors or the people who taught us how to protect our neighborhoods were, you know, some of the remnants of the Black Panthers and some of the individuals who came from Vietnam who settled, you know, in suburbia Compton. That's on the west side of Compton. Um, and, um, you know, giving out free lunches and free breakfasts and free self-defense classes. And so our... our um, our MO, so to speak, the way we move became a little bit different than everybody else, the way they move. Right? We start thinking of a, of a unified concept of, you know, uh, protecting the neighborhood, patrolling the neighborhood, um, all in a military type of movement. Um, I, I suspect is the reason why a lot of bloods um, and, and you know, became five percenters and vice versa, uh, or Muslims or nation, right? Because of we already had that militant type of mentality. Uh, yeah, and, and, and it was it was evident when I was coming up, uh, what side, whatever you lived at, that, that was where you were from. So and since she was born in it, not sworn in it, depending on where you live. And as we grew up, and you know, you go through the trenches with people you're growing up with. Y'all both getting jumped on together. Y'all both running from people together. Y'all both chasing people together. Y'all both jumping on people together. This is the people on your block. That's a bond. Right? That's a bond that's starting to be developed. You know, I know I know what you're about. I know what you know what I'm about. I, I I feel more comfortable. My chances of survival just increase because I know how where well, your heart is at. Then you band together with a bunch of people that share that same philosophy. Now you got, you know, a gang, a tribe. And people start, you know, really uh, believing in their neighborhoods, believing in protecting Miss Virginia and believing in, you know, making sure don't nobody go down there and mess with, you know, uh, Uncle Thomas, you know? Um, and, but you know, it's a culture, it's a subculture. That's not the mainstream culture, but it's the subculture we developed that helped us survive in our, in our environment. How we move is how we move. In every neighborhood, every single neighborhood has their own different way of the way they move, and 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 it and they known by that, and and I'm quite sure Zoe can attest to that, or you guys can attest to that too. Same thing, no matter where you go. So, what year? What, uh, what year did, uh, would you say, like, uh, it started transpiring? What year? Did what started transpiring? When you saying the Crips was coming to the neighborhood and and, and I decided to Oh, stop. that was that was that was in the very beginning. Tookie and them was coming down. They was they weren't playing with nobody. <laughs> they was coming down, man. You know, they was coming all the way down central. Right. So that was that was Tookie and them. That was the big Crip machine. Was that, was but, that but, like, but like Zoe said, like Zoe said, everybody was being called young blood. That was a terminology that came from the Vietnam veterans. Yeah, you that's know? what I remember. Yeah, but everybody was young blood. Everybody. Right? 
Everybody. Yeah, my uncle, my grandfather, all they were saying that young blood, but it wasn't no, you know gang. what I mean? It wasn't me, no gang or nothing. Yeah. But you know, and and then you know, you had the, the Blackstone Rangers come out from Chicago, up on the Team west Rodney. side. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and that kind of, you know, brought a different type of structure, a similar structure to the one that was going on in Compton. But yeah, he that, came with a, that, yeah, that came with a structure, too. But it was all about protecting the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I can speak on... Yeah, yeah. Reason I asked it, yeah, though, just to get a, we we'll just get a timeline. So I know a lot of people actually seeing that, just to get a offering, because we may oh, know, but you got. That, that was the late sixties, early seventies when it all began. And, and you know, as far as the crib side, uh, from my history, for me dealing with the quadruple OGs, the fifth level OGs, you know, way yeah. before the crib, way before the cribs, it was called the cribs. C I R B from the cradle to the grave. You know what I'm saying? I got this information from quadruple OGs. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And in the 70s, they actually took over with the Black Panthers because the Black Panthers was pretty heavy. So when the Black Panthers got hit in LA and watched, that's when you started the WACAC organization. They was giving away the free cheese and a good chocolate chip cookie dough. You know what I mean? This Absolutely. was like 60, this was 68, 69. This is my era, what I remember. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it was the Cribs. Then it was Baby Cribs. You know what I'm saying? And then when Tookie them came, they changed it to Crip. Cuz. You get what I'm saying? And, and and the history just straight just transitioning from that where you got Raymond Washington. You had Barefoot yeah. Tookie. You know what I'm saying? That actually was way before Crips. These was old. Because see, you got to understand the brothers, the Cribs didn't fight against each other. They fought against the racist white people across Alameda. They did. Yeah. They, 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 we, we, they developed a community because they weren't allowed across in, they weren't allowed in Compton. See, yeah, at this time, sure. blacks wasn't allowed in Compton. You know what I mean? Ain't nobody saying that stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? They, they, the blacks had a certain street they couldn't go across on the east side. So the cribs was developing all over from the west side to the east side. And then they had the baby cribs. Then that's when the crib came out. Then that's when I became involved in 1977 as 12, because I'm looking at Tookie them walking down the street. You know, what made me want to be a crib, I seen Tookie on uh, the gong show. Again, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm 12 that. years old. I see this big old, I love the gong show. Bong, get your ass off the stage. <laughs> Tookie didn't get, he didn't get, he didn't get look, Tookie didn't get bong. Took he won. So here the dude at 1977, I see this dude walking down my street every day with his crew. So you know I want to be this. So in my neighborhood, Crips started. We were, it wasn't even about triple OG. It was about just respecting the old yeah. cat. Yeah. You know, neighborhood friends. So you got one family on the block that got 10 brothers. Nigga, them my big homies. All that, the the Johnsons, them crazy dudes. They're my homies, but you got other guys on the block that don't have no brothers or weak ass brothers. So these was my big brothers in the street. So the way I was doing it in the 70s, everybody is different. We wasn't killing each other. We was knocking each other out. Yeah, hands, fight, fight. hands. Somebody yeah. in, in somebody in Hoover got knockouts. So you gonna be the fighter. Somebody, you know, from every crew, they had a knockout fighter, like a boxing management, like a tournament or shit. Niggas used to go to fight. You know what I mean? I used to uh, have to change my clothes. This is how cold it was. It was so secretive. I used to, like, change my clothes into crib clothes, put my regular clothes under the house, go gang bang with my buddies that I hung out with as far as the neighborhood. It wasn't even really a gang. It was just that these are my friends we hung out with. You know what I'm saying? And when I go home, I put my regular clothes on, put my gang banging clothes at the bottom of the house. My mother never knew. So there's a lot of ways that gang banging you was introduced to us as in, in LA. You know what I mean? Um and, and now both structure what hold on, big homie. Both of y'all talking about Compton. I'm 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 assuming, correct? We all talk at I'm both talking guys. about the whole I'm talking about the whole thing. Okay. You know what I mean? Not just Compton, but Compton Watts, South Central as well. You know what I mean? He was talking about now you, you know? had CC, you had the CC riders, Compton Crips. Yeah, they had their yeah. own thing. You know, they had their own community, they had their own setup. They was 
Bad, they had the uh, Santanas, the all the man. They had some coach. They got some coach shit out the Sloans, the all different types of things. You feel what I'm saying? So everybody had their own specter. Like I said, you had the Raymond Washington era, then you had the Tookie era, and then you had the Freeway era. So where us as the Freeway boys, we don't want organized the Crips and the Bloods to go across the nation. We don't want to drop money. Them off. Right? Can we change the game? Because when uh, the money came, we needed street gangs from everybody. It was at one time we had a round table. We had all the gang leaders at the round table talking about making money. But we could not make no money without the gang members. Period. There was no way we could get in anywhere. Even when we traveled across the country. You know what I mean? And we was the first guys to take at least a hundred gang bankers from all the gangs and drop them off at every state. Drop them off in your state, drop them off in Texas, drop them off in Chicago, drop them off in Cincinnati. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we did. That's how the I mean, gang culture. I mean, I, I was even, I was even, I was even, you know what I mean, uh, doing a little traveling back then. Yeah. So you the gang I mean? culture, you know, like I can talk, go all the way back to uh, the documentary, uh, Gang Banging in Arkansas. With, with with the OG yeah. map from Nine Deuce Hoover. If you remember yeah, that yeah, documentary, yeah, yeah, Banging yeah, in Arkansas. Yeah. That's when the shit really hit because Bamp from Nine Deuce Hoover got busted, but he started a gang out there. It was crazy seeing white people at this time talking about this is Crip at that time, you know, in, in Arkansas. So the whole transformation of the travel of gangs just just busted open through the drug trade. That's how it got all out there. And however <laughs> You know what I mean? Far as like the drug trade, far as the money being made. You know what I mean? But far as the culture of gangs, that was a whole new strategy that was done in different states. Everybody, some people come out there propagandering. Some people was out there for real from L.A. But you have a lot of people out there that wouldn't even film L.A. and starting some gangs and lying. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? On the real. Now, check it, check it, check it. I, I'm, I'm, I, I've, I've experienced the whole situation. You know what I mean? This is like back in uh, 86. 85, 86. Mm -hmm. um, somebody trying to call me right now. But it's like 85. Uh, we go to another state. We set up shop. You know, and we conduct a business or whatnot. But our swag is so much different than the individuals that was out there. I mean, without us even like really like our confidence level on certain shit was like, you know, to a point where it, it kind of like them dudes didn't know how to take that. The females wanted to come hang out with us. You know what I mean? The other dudes want to start hanging out with us because the females is hanging out with us. They starting to pick up on our slang and lingo. They want to know about what's going on in our area. They take our stories, and the next thing you know, when we leave, they done started a whole new get-down over there. Things that actually happened like that. I ain't going to say what state and what city, but, you know, if it's actually happened like that, just based on, we was out there doing our thing. So, so I know, I know, I know, I know Zoe alluded to the fact that the drugs is what kind of messed everything up and stuff like that. It, it allowed for individuals to like export themselves from out of LA. And that's when gang culture kind of exploded. Um, at least gang culture as, as it was practiced from bloods and crips and hoovers and etc. as how y'all was banging it out, out, out West. And it began to migrate across the country. It, it didn't come from us. Now, those of us out here, Shaquille and them, they, they're a lot older than us. So they could probably speak to the gang culture as it existed in New York City. But our gangs and in, in in, in how the territories existed were totally different than how they how they were out, out, out west. So I'm going to come back to y'all real quick. And then I'm going I'm to I'm come to Quell and, and ask Quell this question. Quell, in comparison to what, what Big Wack and, and Lorenzo speaking about, can you speak to the similarities or the, the, the differentiation between the gang subculture in New York City, going back like to this, the Black Spades, the Tomahawks, what did that look like back in those days versus what was going on out West? All right, well, while well, the same time while out West had you no know, Bloods and Crips and they also had other little neighborhood games and, and their 
vicinity. Uh, New York, we had Tomahawks. My father was a um, Fort Green, a Farragut chaplain, was called Renegade Chaplains. My uncle was a suicide Mau Mau. And these go back to like the 50s and 60s. Um, Tomahawks came a little later. Then Jolly Stompers, um, Black Spades in the Bronx. And they was basically, uh, I'm not gonna say fighting for the community or trying to protect the people, but more so they was like, um, I'm at the cut my mic off a minute because my dog was still parking, my wife coming back. Uh, but they was more so into, I guess, fighting over territory. And um, and that's what it, that's what it boils down to. And like they like the brother said, man, it wasn't really no guns. It was a lot of um, balls and chains and sticks and, and, and enough brass knuckles and stuff like that. My father got one time cut real bad, though, by a Spanish gang in the Bronx when he was in, up up in the on the beach in the Bronx. And he got cut from one from one side of the front side of the stomach all the way to almost to his spine. They, right, they, like he spent the round when he stabbed him, they ripped through him, you know. And that started a big fight right there on the boardwalk. It was about eight, my father and eight other brothers and about maybe 15 Spanish dudes. So, you know, it was a lot going on in New York. And then came the era of the, the um, bikers and then the street commando. Those are Spanish gangs. So you had chinglings, you had um, rights as hell, you had a lot of familiar unknown bikers. You had a uh, uh, um, crazy homicide, crazy bishops around my way in Fort Green, and, and 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 the list go on and on. It's like a lot of them. So we used to be on Rikers Island. A lot of them came through Rikers Island when I was like 16 in 1982. That's why we started calling the Spanish brother Germans because it seemed like every Spanish dude had a, either a leather vest or a tattooed arm that had 1369 and a swastika. So we didn't know anything else but to call them was Germans. And then after <laughs> Well, about to go. He about to go. He about to either switch, switch, switch to another room, or you gonna yell at the dogs like he always be telling, he be telling the dogs to, to shut up and stuff like that. So, yo, yo, I, yeah. I don't wanna. I know Quell is, is probably. I'm, I'm gonna get the man do it in a minute. Quell, they, they in that era. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. Oh, nah, go ahead, go ahead, big boss. And my dog went crazy. Turn that mic off. They went crazy. Oh, uh, nah. where was? I? Oh, so yeah. So now, at that point. You know, the, the Fabius Nation have been around since 1960. So I joined the ranks of that when I was like 13, 1979. And I was I was golf body for years. And I hear some noise in the background. Y'all hear the noise? I'm just hearing it. Yeah, yeah. If y'all not speaking, can can some can y'all mute yourselves so we don't hear that background noise? Thank you, thank y'all, brothers. Thank right. you. So now, so a lot of us is golf body, me, soul B, and a lot of brothers. And that went on for years, man. And even back then, if you notice, a lot of groups that start off with one purpose, you had people with there with ulterior motives, hidden agendas, and it started going left. So I admit I was one of them. I was one of them renegade. We call them renegade guards. So he was one of them. Where we was doing other stuff like robbing and stealing, all type of stuff when we was young on Rikers Island. But we was going against the grain. As we got older, we start educating ourselves in a different perspective and seeing life in a different angle. And I stopped. I say about 19 years old, 20, I really stopped doing all that. And I came home, I got money, whatever. I robbed establishments, uh, jewelry stores and stuff. I wasn't into like harming my people like that. But as time went on, uh, I wanted to break down the Rikers Island situation with blood. When I first came on the island in 1994, I was 28 years old. So I was there for like maybe a few weeks before I even heard anything about a blood. So somebody one day, somebody said, yo, they got the bloods down in 1B. Now, 1B was the restraint unit, where dudes was full restraint. They, when they come out, they fully restraint. They handcuffs on their, on their, on their hands, their, their, their legs, and everything shackled up. So I'm saying bloods and 1B. What you mean bloods? So now nah, they got bloods. I said, you mean like bloods, like L.A. bloods? They're like, nah, I think they from New York, though, but they blood. I said, I was in the streets, and I ain't seen no bloods in New York. I knew some Crips and Playboy gangsters I was in Harlem back in 92, 93, but I'd never seen no bloods in New York. So I was kind of confused. And as time went on, I went to the court. I went to court one day. It's like end of '94, and I seen him, one brother with a red bandana. He was sitting in the corner, just stone faced, looking real stoic. And he was looking at people in the bullpen, just like looking, look, checking the area out. So I'm like, "Well, this must be one of them dudes they call the Bloods." And said, "All right." So you know, I ain't think nothing of it. After a while, I started talking to him. So we start vibing. He telling me, "Yeah, my name is So and So, and you know, I'm Blood." I said, well, "Where that come from?" He said, "Nah, because OG Mac." You know, he, he started in, in 1993, him and Dada, I'm saying OG Max. So he's from L.A. Like, nah, he, he, he originally from L.A. This is what he told me. Now, he originally from L.A. 
and um, he's from the Bronx too. So he started in 93 to fight against depression. All right, okay, so I took that in. Some months went by, a couple of months, brother named Killer Kev came out from up north, up from prison, came out of Rikers Island where we was at, being detained. He, he, he started, started he started 93. Huh? Would you say he started 93? Yeah, 93, yeah, 1993. Oh, it started in 1993. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So now, uh, I met this brother Killer Kev, so now, you know, at the time, Latin Kings and Nietas, they was really causing a lot of problems. Like they was hurting and harming a lot of black people. Black people was getting cut, you know, stabbed, some almost losing their life. So from what he told me was, they was in one main in 1993. It was like uh, Mac, uh, Dead Eye, uh, Dollar Bill, Country, uh, Shaw 20 and Supreme Love was upstairs in Seven Upper, uh, E-Town, it's like um, Shorty Black. It was like a lot of them in the house. So it's like, it's like, the hate that hate produced. They they hated the Latin kids they did so much from what they was doing to the people that they want this. I just I just figure like they want to come out and start you know bringing it to them like how you said with you know with the blood started with Crips was coming through. They wanted to bring the pain to them, but Mac was very shrewd and charismatic. He sat down with Dead Eye and said, "Yo, that's a good idea. Dudes want to go to the yard and just bomb on them." go to the mess hall, go to the hallways, wherever they want, go to court, see them, do the thing, but it's not going to show no unification. We need to come up under a banner, up under a name. That way they'll see that we formulate, like they formulated for a different cause, and our cause would be fight against oppression. So that I see, yeah, that sounds good. So that, so Mac told him, from what I heard, you know I'm blood, right, from L.A. So they're like, blood, yeah. I'm, I'm originally from L.A. I'm Miller Gangster. And you know, I could bless everybody in, but we need to get bandanas first so they could see that we have something to flag and recognize us. So meanwhile, to make a long story short, that's how it started. Every star they start fighting against the oppression. But then of course you have people in there that have hidden agendas and ulterior motives, but things go left. So you have some brothers that we find out later were sniffing the bag, they're sniffing dope. They were using little homies to put in work on a different agenda, making them think they're doing it for a righteous cause. Like I'll say. You you try to press a dude, and he don't want to give nothing up. So you tell a little homie that dude right there did something to a blood another bill, and that's your plate, right? That's your deal. Handle that. So when he handle that, now you go to the next dude. You see what happened to the last dude? They was playing little games like that. That's why we got rid of his brother named Shaw One Twenty over situations like that. So now as time go on, Mac is up north the whole time. He finally comes back down in 19, 1995. So. I get a chance to see him one day. I'm in um, C95. He's in a um, unit um, called a one and three upper, which is like really isolated unit. He comes to my door and introduces himself as OG Mac. So, you know, I met him everything. He said, I heard a lot about you, man. We got to talk, but he had to go to the visit. He left. Next time I heard from him, I was in an um, North facility, a jail called North facility. He was in the Bing uh, with Man Do up there, all of us in the Bing, right? He sends me this kite with all this, you know, different length, you know, it sound like he's from L.A. You know, he's speaking all these different jargons and all that. So we took it with a grain of salt. We, we, a lot of us really believed and thought he was really from L.A. As time go on, things start seeming funny. We didn't know because even information I had received from, from individuals like him and other people, I'm passing it on. And all the time, this is misguided, misinformed information. So we pass it on and people was, you know, sucking it all in. And then it started growing. Now, we had no intentions whatsoever for it to reach the streets. It was strictly a jail thing from Rikers Island to upstate prison. That was it. It was sometime later when we started starting new hoods, Matt came up with the idea that we had one hood in Allen, and that was Billy Badass. He figured, yo, if we had that one hood, everybody could join that one hood because that, I guess, the person that ran that hood, which we called superior because we didn't have no concept of what an OG was or how to call somebody a godfather, what, what requirements they need to become that. It was just, everything was all over the place. A lot of misinformation. So um, as time went on, he decided to make, create new hoods. He figured that if he create new hoods, it'll be brothers that run those hoods that other people can relate to from different boroughs. And when he did that, it started growing like astronomically. Before you know it, we went from being a hunt being hunted to being hunters it was like we, we became astronomically big in, in a matter of six to eight months and all type of hoods was given out up to the first 10 hoods in the first generation but still a lot of misinformation was given out and i was up in attica at the time i went up to prison i was in attica and 
I received a letter from Mac, and this one he started with rank and file and said, you are high five now. And he named other four that was high five with me that he said we all under him as far as we have the same control and latitude that he had. But at the same time, um, he's going to fall back a little and let's do our thing. But he was smart. He knew that at some point you being able to outgrow him. So he wanted to put people in certain places that had a lot of influence. I'm a thinker. Then you had, let's say, Tank had, he was a warrior. He was a juggernaut. Then you had Iz, who was another different animal. And then you had Wayno, who Wayno was more laid back like me. Even though Wayno was on Allen, Wayno was wild. He, he was waging war against uh, emergency response units in the Bing, getting brothers to come out there, sell a pop on the police. They was doing their thing. But even Wayno came up north when he got all that time and he fell back and he got calm and collected. But then you had uh, Dead Eye, who, you know, a lot of us really didn't get along with, but he was dead. He's part of history, so we can't take that from him. However, is when at that point I start seeing like a lot of things didn't add up, like the, the using of the trays, and he was calling one of the brothers Pookie Loke. And I'm like, it, it, the left and the right, and he had Chicago history mixed up with the blood history. And I'm trying to figure out where this dude getting all this stuff from, because I'm starting to read books, and it's not adding up to what he was saying. And this is like around 9 8, going to 9 9, we start educating us of me, so be a lot of other brothers that was into reading books, we start seeing things for what it was. So I start reaching out to the streets of people that's around his way. And they was telling me that he never was from LA. He was from the Bronx the whole time. And come to find out, it's this brother that he knew that grew up in the Bronx that moved to Colorado, became a Denver Lane. He used to come back to New York all the time. He used to have his khakis on and, 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 his, and, and, and his flag hanging. And that's when Matt became fascinated with the blood thing. So he utilized that down the line to his advantage to create a nation of people, I guess, for whatever reason he wanted to use it for. But like I said, we never intended to reach the streets. So it was somewhere around 9-7, early 9-7, that we start hearing, and man, Duke can attest to this, we start hearing like bloods all over the streets. My hood was Gangsta Killer Bloods, which was started by CK and a few other brothers. We all like the founders, the first five. And I, I start hearing like Albany Products in Brooklyn was like a whole project full of Gangsta Killer Bloods. Like, how, how did that happen? How did he even reach the New York? We was baffled by that. So at that point, it starts spreading out. Then the nine trade starts spreading out, and then everybody starts spreading out. We never intended for it to be the streets. And when it's to the streets, we lost control at some point. Kids out there doing unthinkable things, cutting older people that they had blue on, cutting old people they had red on. Um, it didn't belong, it didn't go to have no red on, and all type of stuff, like a big influence. So a lot of us that was up north started writing to the streets to try to slow that down, which we did. A lot of them senseless cutting the last day stopped and stuff. But now we're in tune with the streets. And we, we couldn't stop it from the streets because it's already it's already a monster within itself. We just blew it in. And they was like, a lot of the brothers up north, they they had acknowledgement to a certain extent. But I'm going to tell you, like the Rikers Island blood, those that was on the island from the inception of bloods had the most respect from the streets because the streets was more connected to them because Rikers Island right there in the borough. So if you heard your name up north, they didn't really know it like that. But you got a lot of brothers up north that was really, you know, for the struggle and put a lot of pain and just didn't get the acknowledgement that a lot of them deserved. And that's how I got in control. And at some point, like you said, everything goes left, man. People was in there for the wrong reasons. Then they start bringing people in that didn't have the requirements to be blood. And then they start getting out of control to the point where even OGs like us didn't have no control. But by 1999, I became the GF for the whole UBN in New York. Back there, went home. But by that time, I didn't want to be there. I, I never asked for the position. It, just, it was too much going on. I'm talking to, uh, to the point where the structure just fell apart and the house divided just itself can't stand because you had a lot of big homies that had different hoods that resented each other. So now it's even another problem. And then you had the problem with names being used. Like, for example, not just my name, but other people's names. If your name was pop at that time, people in the streets will use your name to get things done. So they'll say like, hey, yo, man, uh, Shaq Quelder sent word that so-and-so is a plate, so he got to be dealt with. Meanwhile, I never sent no message. I don't even know the person that was telling that. So a lot of things are going on. I said, man, this going to lead to the big boy, the big house or something, man. So I started fading back a little bit to the point where I became like, to the point like almost non-existent, even though I was still there. You know what I mean? That's just best, basically my take on it. You know, I, But wow. since over the years, I've met a lot of good brothers from L.A. And some of them, I, I get... I, I, I get bad feelings on what was their intentions, but a lot of them was good brothers that I got the vibe with. Like, for example, I don't know if y'all know Brother Blade, Free Blade. He's from um, Pyro 135 out there, I believe, from, from Compton, right? But he's locked up now. But like, he got a little team that's in Jersey, and he's come to New York, and he's come to my parties, the G-Shine parties and everything. So I got a little ties with a lot of brothers there. Red Rum, rest in peace. 
I used to talk to him all the time. He used to come to New York trying to do his documentary on um, blood transfusion. Um, it's a lot of people. I think one of the first ones I started talking to was T. Rogers. Um, I had wrote him in 99 when I seen the address of his company in, in Uprising. He never answered back. But if somebody in New York was in tune with him, they used to mention my name all the time. He reached out one time and sent me an address. He sent it to my PO boss. My wife brought him a visit, and I started, you know, building with him. But uh, that's that's about it, though. That's what I got to say on that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I, and, and you know what? I like that because you know I deal with T. Rogers when he was out here. You know what I'm saying? Because we had a whole gang community intervention class, so we had 60 gang members working together out here in LA. And T. J. Rogers was one of those brothers. You know, he was a real strong, valid individual. You know what I'm saying? Knowing just knowing the story was incredible. Mo, you know, rest in peace, T. Rogers. You know what I mean? And those are the type of guys I affiliated myself with to make change in LA. You know, right, right. now you got major major guys just like me myself it's not just only me out here pushing you know i'm just pushing on the education level that's what i'm doing right. you know what i mean i'm more in the, the level to say okay you're gonna need to go to school you got a, i got a scholarship look you know if you're a ninth grader playing football you need to act like you're a 12th grader in ninth grade in order to get go through because you're gonna have a lot of op, op, options that you have to choose you know because it's the gangs it's the drugs it's the girls you know what i mean right. Uh, uh, it's a different transformation of what's going on in in society now. You know, like right now, I got six devices around me. Six devices. You know what I'm saying? So everything game banging, but they really game banging on the internet. You know what I mean? I know people that got killed game banging on the internet. That's another problem. You feel what I mean? Um, and I don't want to leave out the original gangs in L.A. And that's the businessmen, the Slawsons. Mm -hmm. The real OGs, the dudes that was way before gangs, the guys that was fighting against the for the culture of blacks. Like I said, it was a whole lot of different movements in LA. You know, you got the businessmen, the the uh, 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 the Slawsons, you know, you got the Cribs, you got the Black Panthers, you got the Crips. So it was a whole lot of different transitioning on why gang culture have changed so dramatically in LA. It's like once it left LA. It kind of built L.A. ego up because now we got Crips. We don't even know. And I mean, it was a trip when I was in my in Cincinnati and I saw a dude with all blue on with the with the golf hat, the everything. And I mean, in 1987, I'm looking at this dude like he made me feel like if I was in L.A., but I'm in Cincinnati. Like, what the hell? We don't even dress. I'm saying we don't even dress like that no more. You get what I'm saying? So it was kind of like a culture change for me to say, damn. It ain't got this far. It ain't got this far in society to where people don't watch colors. Colors is a lot of things that were did in colors that like well, set it off. We didn't, you know what? We didn't even really LA, 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 look, when we, when we was going out of town and we was going to these different spots, everybody the places that we went to, man, we was we was Celebrity. astonished at how slow people was. Woo. LA is fast. That's yeah. Hollywood. You know what I mean? Yeah. They look when they every time I went out, they, they asked me, Do I do I I know Eddie Murphy or do I know you know Easy E or do I you know what I mean? Yeah. Like like yeah. They you know what talking mean? About so games. we weren't even talking about none of that. You know what I mean? It's just the fact that when we when we went there with our Jerry curls and our Turkish ropes and our medallions and our Chuck yeah, Taylors yeah. and our pages and our you know what I mean our, 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 our big strap on Panasonic phones, <laughs> you you know you remember so? Come on, yo, yes, sir. Yo, I'm, 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 it's funny, it's yeah, funny you said a big whack because I'm gonna get to that, but I want I want to ask man do the same question I asked, I asked, I asked, because uh, um, we're going to them, get to them chucks, we're going to get to the khakis, we're going to get to all that, but, but we, that's a fact, but yo, dude, I want to ask you the same question I asked Quell, because I know y'all in the same age bracket, and what, what was, even trying to deny it, <laughs> yeah, even though Quell was trying to deny it, so, so, so what, what was your, what was your, what was your experiences compared to how, how Big Whack, and how, how how Lorenzo how they describe their upbringing out there out west versus similar or diff, di distinguished to how how you lived your life in Brownsville and in Brooklyn, you know speak speak to that man. Let let us hear a little bit about that so we can hear about that gang subculture. 
as I said, I can speak to that because we all from the same area. I'm, I'm era. I was born in 67. So, you know, and I come from the era where the Black Panther was like the Damu, the wave. When we first did the Damu wave in New York, see how that shit just caught a whole wave? Well, back then in the 60s, the Panthers was the wave. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They had their, they controlled all of it. They controlled everything as far as when it came to black culture, to the music, all that from the Poets Lounge <laughs> to, 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 to Curtis, Curtis Mayfield and all of them. You know what I'm saying? The music was influenced by the Black Panther culture and everything. So when, especially the black radio, that, that influenced black med- media, influenced black culture heavily back then. So I was born in that era. I grew up in an era like the 70s. All that still was black panther and going to gang culture. And um, mm-hmm. my first experience with gang culture is similar to the brothers out there on the West. Like I w- I'm from, I'm born in Bre- East New York in Brownsville. That's where I grew up from. I'm, and this is where I'm at. It's my mud. However, I grew up in the Tomahawk era. I was a Tomahawk, you know what I'm saying? Me and Baby Sam and all of them, all of us was Tomahawks back in the days, from, from God bodies to Tomahawks. But our, our big homies, you know, was Akbar, them, all of them was five and seven. Devon, Bishmi, Ron Du, all of them that on my block. I'm, I'm, I'm from Tapscott in Southeast New York when I lived in Brownsville. From the Brownstone houses, they first pool hall is on my block on Tapscott and Sutter. Moshe know about that. <laughs> there used to be a Puerto Rican auto parts store. I don't know how the hell they got it. It's none of my business. But I know one day it wasn't an auto parts store no more. We used to there playing Pac-Man and shooting pool. And the big homies had that on lock. All right? We had a whole new spot to hang out in. We had, from outside of Brownsville, we went across East 98th Street to Rutland Road. We got to fight all the dudes in the 90s. So we can't go to their pizza shop or their pool room or their game room. Cause that's on that's the neighborhood. So we got to stay in Brownsville. I'm bought them provided that for us. But those were my big homies. I come up from the Tomahawk era and then end up going back and forth to Juvenile. Me, Mike Tyson, Blue Boy, all of us was in Tryon. All those, all, all of those Juvenile joints we did together. So I know all of them and just as well as them all, they all know me. And from Tomahawks to Father Centers, I come from the era where me and Quell when I was on the island. I was one of the five percenters too. My name Man Do. It's always been that. And um, I was the renegade five percent that started my own shit. I wasn't with the peace treaty that the Muslims and some of the guards had with the with the Netas and the Latin Kings at that time. I, I wasn't with that. I came in there on some black power shit anyway. My mom's was a straight up Panther, and I always been on beast mode time. So I came in there well read. So especially at that time, I was already up north. Me and Quellina was already reading up north in the 80s. So by the time Damu started, we already had the K.O. Smitty and the Lamumba and the Mo Zulu mentality anyway, because those was our mentors when we was in prison. Those were our big homies. The, what we are to a lot of the younger generations to, to, today, they were that to us back then. And Quell know exactly who I'm talking about. Moshe met all of them. All of those are the old. They're they, they the true veterans of the game. So... I was raised under them. So I was always knew about unification because I'm a big brother. I'm the oldest brother, the oldest cousin. So I always knew how to take leadership, bro. Always. I went from being a Tomahawk to Father Center to Warrior Clan to meeting Mac and Quell and all of them. And then we took the red flag and we did what we did with it. All right. There's a lot of us because, like he said, Mac was charismatic. He knew to go collect OGs from different hoods. We all wasn't. We and Quell, me and Quell knew each other since the four building days. We grew up at 16, 17, 18. Me and them known each other since then. And, and unfortunately, this is our first time in the street together. Because ever, ever since I've known them, it's always been in prison. Our whole friendship has been, and com- camaraderie has been behind walls. You know what I'm saying? So it's a pleasure to be out here with you for the first time. Quell, after 40 years. <laughs> But it's that I grew up under that era. I grew up in a similar era where they grew up in the West Coast. So um, even though they're on the other side of the country, the similarity is the same. So to me, all hoods are the same. The brother mm-hmm. saying, you know, to me, all hoods are the same because the struggle is the same. Like, I don't know. They struggle ain't no day much different than what we had over here. Not only East, anywhere, any black or brown or any community, people look like us. You know, our stories are similar. That's why when somebody is telling you stories, especially when we was in the box, we all heard each other's family and life stories, you know? So when them years we spent in the box, that's why when somebody telling you their story about their trauma and the shit they've been through, you can't wait 
Because you got a story similar to that. You got like nine stories in your mind on your roller decks to hit them that sound just like the one he's giving you, right? Y'all just meeting each other. How come he, his story and his tragedy, his trauma sound similar to yours, right? So it's, my point is to say that it, all, all, all of that, all of that, that type of, that type of uh, 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 um, struggle is in every hood. It's in every hood. It's by grand design, you know. So a lot of us that know these things now. It's time about teaching us like us older dudes, the older OGs on the panel right now. Salute to what you all of y'all are doing. You know what I'm saying? Salute to us that's coming out of there, coming out of prison and is out here right now, putting our bodies on the line, just like the way we put our bodies on the line when we was in prison. You know, Moshe, I don't know if people familiar with your story. You put your whole body on the line. You ran up in the sergeant booth. Okay, you tracked them. That was a lot of Oh, burn, okay. <laughs> Remember, I was up in the box waiting for y'all. I knew you was coming. They, they, they <laughs> called gunshots in the yard and everything. What? They twisted it. So, you know, that's the type of time we was going to touch one of ours. We're going to touch everything of yours. We don't care who started it or that. He's a director you know now. He's okay, what about what is that? Yeah, that that I, mentality. No, I just got a massage. I just got a massage today, man. Do from that 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 a that a yeah, whipping they gave me. Yeah, 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 yeah. From the retaliation. Retaliation. Yeah, yeah, so me and my wife got the, massages yesterday too, bro. That's crazy, right? Yeah. Well, listen, that energy you can't let that go. But the same way you brought it to him physically, you still bring it to him right now because you was, you, you don't match the statistic. You don't broke the stats already. So you still you still persevere and still punch them in the mouth the same way you did that. You're just doing it through this level. You follow what I'm trying to say? Because a lot of the things that we're supposed to do, a lot of the things that us, the dudes who do time like we do with our numbers, we ain't supposed to be coming home and moving the way we be moving. We ain't supposed to be coming home and be no directors. That ain't written. That ain't written. That you don't you don't you don't shatter the glass ceiling, so to say. You follow what I'm trying to say? And you are one of many of us that have came home. A lot of these organizations. Is this because dudes who went in there and went through the trauma, we're trying to save lives like, yo, little homie, you don't want to go through that shit. You don't want to go through the shit that we just went through. All right? And it's worse. All right? Oh, it's worse. Real. It's, it's oh, worse because there, no, there ain't no unification at all right now. Everybody there, it's every man for himself. You know what I'm trying to say? So you ain't even, you can't even trust the motherfucker sitting next to you no more. All right? So it ain't no, it's worse right now. So the, 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 the point that I'm making is this, that so many of us went through these this this trauma together. We trying to save dudes. We trying to be the front line and say, "Yo, homie, knock it off. Don't do that." <laughs> you have to find. In fact, we're not gonna tell you what, what, what lane. We are gonna bring you in the lane that we in. We over here doing some new shit, and this shit is progressive. It's moving mm -hmm. forward. It ain't going. Remember, in the roster culture, said forward ever, backwards never. We ain't never gonna go back. You know what I'm saying? So we got to move forward with progression. So a lot of the things we on the front line trying to save a lot of little young brothers and sisters, anybody that's into gangster culture, we trying to save their lives and tell them, yo, listen, um, take our word for it. A lot of us that got this gray hair now, we ain't going like this. This is how we came out. <laughs> okay? I tell all the young dudes I ran into in prison, I was like, yo, listen, if you don't, if you don't know how to maneuver through here in a room full of vultures with these devils, they would line you up. They put weapons in your cell. Bust you down and say you bust them down and put some more time on you and all that. I'd say you to death. Yeah, I'd say, come on, how many years you did that say? Come on. Eight, you know what I'm saying? Eight, eight years the first time and 52 months the second time. Come on, man. On the on the whim. Anytime they go, anytime when they catch a bad, a bad vibe, they act in second us. You know, we lived there. I was there a million zillion times. They don't even get a bad vibe. Bad. They, they don't get a bad as soon as you walk, as soon as I walk in the Absolutely. door. Absolutely. Hey, look, look, look. Then they're the done door. that. Then they're done that. Cork and shoot for the one. They meeting, they meeting me in the, in the receiving room, Johnson. We already know who you is. We already, I get it. I say, you know what? Get the fuck out of my face. If you already know that, then why you come and talking to me if you already know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm saying? Now I'm going to do worse than what you thought I was going to do. <laughs> to you. <laughs> no, right? not, not, we ain't gonna do that amongst ourselves and be wilding on each other. Hell no, we don't do none of that. Yo, We're gonna yo, do all me, that energy and put it towards you. Yo, okay? time on let, me ask, let me ask, let me ask whack, let me ask whack, big whack this, right? So, and this is to, to, to all of y'all, really, man. But, like, like where y'all think the origins of, I mean, I, it's probably a simple question, but y'all probably got your own theories of this, man. But I got my own theory. But what do y'all think this whole we can't be united stuff comes from? Like, because you from Compton, you from the West, 
and we from over here. Like, where does this come from? Like, we can't somehow be in the room together without us going crazy. We just got to kill each other. Like, where does this stuff come from? Like, who makes that this come, stuff? They that say come from media before. That come from me, media before now. Like, See, media, well, before, hold up, hold up, Mikey, let me say that something, because I read a book years ago. It said, uh, um, um, it was about media. It was, on uh, um, don't blame the people, how they use media to manipulate public opinion, right? Um, um, the era, well, you see with Big and Pop, the West Coast, East Coast, they used media, right? They ain't had you the two, you ain't had none of this shit existed back then where people from the West Coast could talk directly to us like this and have panels and formats. It wasn't any, those forums didn't exist. You know what I'm trying to say? But dude, so now that you got this form, you say, where did it come from? It came from the people that want to keep us in the box <laughs> or put us in the box. Keep us inside some type of mental box, some type of box where we can't move any further and get no progression. That's where it came from. It was mediated. It was in the music, every magazine, hold up, every magazine, every movie you've seen, you know, it was always East versus West. Every song, that was in the media. But today, now that you got dudes, look, these dudes is always on the West Coast. They, we ain't even in the same time zone, all right? The sun is still shining yeah. where they at. Yeah, and we but, able to talk to each other like we in the living room. I just sparked up an L. I, I, I was ready to pass it to the panel. Like, yo, who won it? <laughs> yeah. But you know, I, I look so, at it. So, <laughs> they can't run that so, same bullshit on us today. But, <laughs> hey, you know, hey, so, 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 so the other thing is, what I've been, you know, I got a radio show called Compton Politics, right? So I done interviewed everybody from the whoever, right? So this is another thing. Right. What I know for sure, because I got personal friends that's really like super governmental, like on some real shit, right? So these are stir this is what's really going on. The government has certain type of agencies that specialize in entrapping you in your community. Say for instance, I have a friend. He's he this is his job. He's a typical black man, a L7 square. His favorite hobby is collecting paintings. He has over 30,000 paintings. To you in the neighborhood, he's just a guy that's gonna pull up, smoke a joint with you, and talk about paintings, and talk about artistic things, like, right? But where he go, his job was to go to the White House, at the bottom of the White House, and it's a, something called a core team, the core team. Everybody that make money always have a core team before they make a decision, before it go to the committee, before it go to the Congress, before it go to the community. He was placed in our community to, to, to investigate the whole community for 10 years to articulate and go back to the government and report how y'all guys have grew up in the last 10 years because this dude started letting y'all play music instruments. Now, do you thinking this dude is a mu uh, music teacher, but he's really watching you grow from 10 years old to 20 years old? Because the establishment in the community, he's watching you. So he know your whole family because you trust them. So he goes back to the White House and to this little agency and give up all the information about how, what he think you're gonna be doing because he's been watching you grow. He gives a report about the community and the people in the community. So they're able to come in and know how they can or say things like this. They have a hundred thousand bad checks, right? But they've been watching your hood for like five years and they know the main players, right? They know y'all ain't did shit in five years. Y'all broke as hell. Y'all y'all doing is go buy nickel bags of weed every day. Y'all struggling, drinking eight ball. They didn't analyze this neighborhood, right? They know if they get a hundred thousand checks and put it in his neighborhood, they only they know it's two on it's only two check cashing places in his neighborhood. They know none of these dudes got a car to go. They know when they get these checks, they're gonna go to these two places. They know they're gonna plant these checks in the community, right? They gonna let these dudes cash these checks because these know these dudes ain't got no transportation. They're gonna let them go in this check cashing place and cash them. Now, they already knew they growth from 10 years old to 20. They know they ain't had no money. They ain't never had no jobs. These the not the bums of the neighborhood, but these the niggas that hang out. You know how we do it. We just happy to be around and we, we own this block. So they let the dudes, so it's a hundred dudes on this, in this neighborhood. They know from childhood, they grown. Don't none of them have cars or anything. They just got bikes. So they the check cashing place, because the FBI, the CIA let you come and get a check cashing place to look. Let these guys 
cast these checks because we got we're gonna convict them after so they let you cast the checks just like the dope game they let you so these dudes that never had cars now they got cars now they got up they ain't buying houses because they're too stupid they're gonna be able to rent apartments right so when it go down because they entrapped the community now they come in a bus you like they had like whacking can, can vouch me for this they said in california a year ago it was okay to go in the stores and steal so it was a law so they let all these so they let all these people come in the stores and they stealing right but when the the young people got smart and starting to crash it with 50 people at a time in the stores what do you think they did overnight they created a federal crime so they create crime in our community for you to commit and they already got places for you to go as prison so this is what i'm saying they entrap us all the time we fall for the old okie doke all the time look they already know uh, they already yeah they already know that them dudes are gonna get them hundred thousand checks and cash them they knew they was gonna cash them at you feel what i'm saying they knew they were gonna cash them because it's only two cashing places so everybody that cast them checks that's when the rico came in because they already knew in this area is poor they ain't got nothing to do so let's put a, a, a substance over there just like crack we big it, it goes it, it goes it goes even even deeper than that but uh okay. i'm reminded of i used to have this think tank when i was in prison and when i was in Folsom, we had this this table called the think tank where we get all the intellectual brothers from different areas you know muslims up north cats you know crips whatever and we'd just sit down and we'd just talk about whatever the topic was of the day and how, what kind of solutions we would come up with. And it would always, the question would always be asked, I mean, not the question, but a statement would always be made, well, after we go through some, you know, some it's real deep intellectual stuff, the statement would be always made, man, they're not going to let, they're not going to let us out, man. These are the type of niggas they're not going to let out. These niggas just, you know, and then they're going and I and my my rebuttal to that will, will always be, what if they do? Um, what if they do, and then what? Big Mac, let me ask y'all brothers a question. So, yeah. so Mo, Mo was starting with the question, that, um, and man, do had jumped in the answer, but we want this this we want this answer from the West Coast from y'all brothers. Um, so they always try to put, you know, this barrier between the East Coast and the West Coast, and talk about how much y'all don't like, you know guys on the east coast and um you know guys repping y'all sets on the east coast um how do y'all feel about you know guys y'all y'all gangs y'all actually crews or whatever y'all was repping when y'all was younger or whatever y'all was doing who was in and the like um on the east coast now um you know these chapters of y'all sets or whatever some is some is um was not actually um granted um real permission um and they got a lot of these West Coast sets on the East Coast. How do y'all feel about that? Well, you know, uh, for me, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna say this. Uh, I grew up in the era where, you know, as far as a Damu, we didn't really care if he was from Ten Buck Two. If you was a rider, we was fucking with you. You know what I mean? Right. So let me just say, get that out the way. Uh, secondly, I, I I understand both sides of the but an equation. I can see the because I've traveled back in the eighties when the things were getting started. Uh, because of that, and I've seen how neighborhoods get started. I already know how you know uh, certain people feel about what they call is offshoots or whatever, you know what I mean? Or copiers or copycats or however, you know what I mean? You're going to have those people no matter what. In California, you have, you have San Diego is, a, is, you know, is Southern California too, but you still had a long time for San Diego gangs to get their respect from LA. You got, it took a long time for Sacramento gangs to get their respect. From San, Jose. San Jose, San Jose, you know what I mean? To get their respect from LA, and this is all in California. We even talk about way on the East Coast, 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> So even San Bernardino, people, even San Bernardino. San Bernardino. I mean, you know, you got That's all these little spots, away, all yeah. these little spots in California. It took them a minute, you know, but at the same time, because of the simple fact that they're in California, they've always had access to how things are supposed to go, or how things, you know, were, you know, thought up or how supposed to, how they were supposed to go, you know, whatever that philosophy was. Right, they've always had access to that because it's in California. It was easy for you know Portland to fall in line, Oregon for Seattle to fall in line, for Vegas to fall in line, for you know Phoenix to fall in line, for Albuquerque to fall because it's still on the West Coast, you know. And then it just started going further and further, and further. Chicago, I think Chicago, Detroit, and New York was like the last, you know, places where Bloods and Crips, it, it was even at. You yeah, know what Atlanta. I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Was, Atlanta, 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 that happened. Atlanta, Memphis, New Jersey, that shit happened in the 80s. You know, I've I, I witnessed a few of those things, you know what I mean? That shit happened in the 80s. But I'm talking about New York. We always respected New York. All the time. For New York having love. their own originality and their from own hip-hop. thing from, from hip hop, from, from hip hop, you know what I mean? We respected the creativity, we respected the wordplay, yeah. we respected yeah. the style, the get down, the whole thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the Tim's, all that, right? But you know, for a lot of individuals, it's it, it's, it's going to take some time. It probably has already passed already, you know, for some cats. But it's going to take some time, you know what I mean? And, and and that's just on that type of tip. But as as far as, I don't think there's no East Coast, West Coast beef. It's just that the, the, the respect factor there, it's going to take some co- time for some cats to accept that when you know it's a lot of cats have already have accepted that you know what i mean because you know no matter what where you at in the world you know what i mean the authenticity gonna 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 be there the real recognize the real you know like That's the brother it. said you know brother said you know the, the all the time we we didn't did time in the box i mean that what y'all say you you i i know similar situations similar stories you know what I mean? Oh, I, I want to so, so we all, I mean, we, I, we, I get it. Hold on for one second. Yo, y'all tuned in the We Locked In. Y'all tuned in the We Locked In. Yeah, Listen, but, um, hit that but, like um, button, man. Go ahead, your palm me, Big Wack. Hit that like button on your way in, man. Go ahead, Big Wack. Hey, share, like, subscribe. Go ahead, Big Wack. But yeah, you know what I mean? I'm just, you know, and that's that's just my take on it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a Zo might have a different take on it, but that's just my take on it. No, no, I got the same take. You know, what I was talking from my OGs, and I got OGs from every hood out here. I got brothers that's bloods that's my OGs, and I always thought, no matter where you go, you gonna respect the OG, no matter if be a blood or a crip. Seriously, this is how I grow because it's still a teaching there. No matter if you're a crip or a blood, because we still got people against us at the same time. When I went to the feds, this is the first time I ever seen Crips, Bloods, and West Coast Mexicans on the same team because we in a Mexican prison. You get what I'm saying? It's like you had the 60s, the Main Streets, the Hoovers, the 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 Playboys, the San Jose Crips, the Sandy, like you were saying, the San Diego Crips. We even had the East Coast cats on our team from New Jersey, New York. You know, because it was only we had to come together in in Texas and we was 1500 Mexicans. So no matter what, the blacks came together. You get what I'm saying? And this is the orchestration. So that reminded me when I was when I'm original with the freeway boys. I mean, we really deal with every gang. Like I dealt with the gang leaders of every gang in the dope game. That's how you know what I mean? And I know it can work. I know it can work. It's just the whole matter is we ain't different. People on the look. I was in an era when hip hop and drugs was battling with each other. I'm going to tell you one little quick story. In 1984, 
Russell Simmons came to LA and tried to borrow a million dollars from Rick to start Def Jam. Rick told him no, right? Because at this time, we trying to recruit youngsters to sell drugs. They trying to recruit youngsters to do music. At the same time, this is right after the Olympics. This is when all this shit started. Scarface. We didn't know how to shoot each other in the head, chain each other up in the bathroom and do all. We wasn't doing that shit. It was things that was left in 1984. That's when all the different countries came here. And they left all the drugs, all the guns in America for the black community because this is the time that they thought we was going to destroy ourselves. Crack was made for us to destroy ourselves. But we end up doing it on a master scientist level and started making quadruple times our money. We paid back the Colombians for what they wanted, but we was having four times the money because we was making triple off one, right? So the whole the whole change kicked in when the Olympics came. Ronald Reagan let all the mental health people out of the hospital. One or more mental hospitals. Homelessness started. All this stuff. You get what I'm saying? Before the Olympics in eighty three in eighty four, they cleaned the streets up. It wasn't a gang member on the streets. It wasn't a bomb on the streets. They cleaned it up. So everything started from eighty four. And the reason why I told the Rick Ross thing because that was the change of hip hop not trusting drug dealers. This is what, and, and, and I guess. Uh, 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 Russell Simmons, I, this was the way we can save people. But, you know, we were about our paper back then, you know, uh, basketball, uh, uh, Magic Johnson back in those days, see, we was making $3 million a day in 84, right? But a, a Laker, Magic Johnson was only making a million dollars a year. You feel me? Magic Johnson was only making a million dollars a year in 1984. We was making $3 million a day. We was buying houses from the Lakers. You get what I'm saying? So the whole era shifted. And when the gang culture, what I see me being right there on the transitioning of it, it was a lot of following, a lot of following, a lot of people following a leader, believing in a leader, believing in a movement. And that's the same thing we need to do today. We got to be, create a movement amongst ourselves. Man, we I, look, people I know, I don't ever hear nobody in LA say fuck New York, bro. Seriously, homie. We love y'all. On the real. On some real, some real shit. Nick, you, bro, you would be a you you can't even imagine how many brothers from the street would love to come to New York and meet y'all brothers. On the all real. All together. Me and that's, that's, why, that's, why, that's why we on, that's why we on, Yes, what's up, my brother? Go ahead, go ahead. What you about to say? Nah, go ahead. I apologize. Go ahead, Mikey. No, nah, man, do have to say, say it and then let man do go. Say what you oh, got to say, let man do go. I, I, I want to oh, say yeah. to the brothers on the West, I can't wait to get on that side to see you. I want to shout out to one of my brothers on the West right now. Hold up. Uh, what the hell? There's a delay in this shit. <laughs> nah, you good. Yeah, you good. Yeah, you good. Yeah, yeah, Stop listening right. to your phone and talk, bro. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm looking. I'm stopping listening to the phone. But anyway, I want to shout out to my brother King Reaper Zink. My brother Reaper Zink and I'm over there. I want to shout them out. So I'm supposed to be going over there this summer to see them. So when I'm on that side, I'm gonna hit y'all up too. <laughs> so you go out to eat, show me around the town. And when y'all over here, just hit me up, and we can go out to eat and do the same thing. You already know we nation, man. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, we we know one thing man do love to do. He love to eat, man. We know that. That's a fact. <laughs> Oh, the real. <laughs> you said you say you said Quell wanted to say something, Mikey. No, no yeah, I was, I was, I was, good, good, Quell. I was saying that most of the brothers that I know, like Breeze and um, even Sly Fox, went over there. Mm -hmm. He was claiming Bishop over here. He had no ties to LA, but he ventured out to LA, took the chance, the opportunity, and met with I think on one of the Lavender brothers, was it Bobby or one of them, or Bobby brother. Um, and they embraced him with love. And like I said, one three five Pyro, they embraced him with love, like. A lot of brothers I met that and went out there that I know from New York got receiving open arms. So I know it's not everybody don't feel the same way out there. Yeah, I think I think I, think, I mean the, the obviously Big Wack and Lorenzo they 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 they, they can speak more to my personal feelings. Um, my, my my feelings are just my opinions. But I always felt it was like that. I've always been like optimistic. I've always been like a, a person that could bring people together. So I always felt like 
Um, there was misunderstandings. I've always been very cynical about authority figures, and I always felt like even going all the way back to Bobby, um, to um, Huey P. Newton and Eldridge Cleaver, when they was online, they had the little verbal spat amongst themselves, and that created a schism between the Black Panther Party and stuff like that. So I always knew that there was this fascination of wanting to keep us divided from these coasts, especially when the gangs came about. Um, then you do the drugs and the guns and so on and so forth. But I, me personally, I know that we always have the capabilities to come together. I never doubt that we can't unite ourselves and we can't push a united agenda with all of our people, no matter where we come from. I do know that there's differences in, 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 in how we uh, put forth our Move. philosophy. There's no doubt yeah. about that. But overall, I'm always optimistic and I always give our people the benefit of the doubt that I don't care if I go to Compton, Harlem, Baltimore, Maryland, the south side of Chicago. I'm always going to give the people of the benefit of the doubt that we can we can unite ourselves and come together. I don't I don't care. That don't mean I'm a gotcha. fool. I'm just walking with my, you know, like walking into somebody's territory, going to get gunned down. That don't mean I'm doing that. I'm just saying that. I believe personally that all of us have the ability to, to say, you know what, this is foolish. This don't make sense. This is a bigger agenda. We got something we need to do. We need to come together. Absolutely. You're absolutely up. right. I got this thing. I got this thing where I believe in the power of five. You know what I mean? I believe that we all have at least five positive in individuals in our lives, whether we see them every day or not. You know what I mean? Male or female, we just at least got five positive individuals in our lives. And we draw strength from that five positive energy. You know what I mean? Those five positive people, we draw strength from them. Their energy, every time they come close, we feel better. You know what I mean? Every time we talk to them, we feel better. Right. All right? And those five got five people that do the same thing for them. And those five got five people that do the same thing to them. Next thing you know, we get connected on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a podcast like this. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Just from just from the positive energy that we connect into. Now we got all got something going on in our purpose. And I what I hear is, you know, your purpose is similar to mine. And that is to uh be a steward of his will and give back to my community that the, the community that I help, you know, uh decimate, so to speak. Right? To kingdom build and rebuild that. I do youth reentry. I do adult reentry. I do counseling. I do, you know, uh, motivational speaking. I, I've written a, written a motivational book, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm out here in the field, literally. And I, since I've been home, I'm, I haven't tried to get rich at this or nothing because I understand that, you know, my purpose is bigger than that, right? The lives that I I impact and the ripple effect of my positive impact on their lives instead of the ripple effect or the negative impact that I've had on people's lives is a far more rewarding uh, uh, endeavor. You know what I mean? And so um, that's what I'm about. And I, I and, and I like the energy in this group because I feel that we're all king to building and we're all working towards the same thing. New York has always been out hit this way. Like the brother said, I ain't never heard nobody say you know, fuck New York. Well, I ain't gonna take that. I'm gonna take that back. I heard Pac say it. You know, I even hear Pac say that. My bad. My bad. He he said big. He Pac say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Pac just said. I ain't never really heard nobody say it. You know what I mean? But however, I'm, I'm gonna keep it 100. You know, I understand that uh, some dudes, when it comes to when it comes to sets, right? When it comes when it comes to sets, now that that that's gonna rub a lot of some people the wrong way if you ain't tapped in and and, and got the authorization to do that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But and like I said, some people it's gonna take a minute because they, some people feel a certain way about that. But you know, you got some other people like I said. I didn't care if you was from Ten Buck Two if you was a rider and you stuck to the rules of the game. I'll fuck with you. Uh, yo, I'm going to be honest so, with you, Big Wack. Yeah. I know that. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, you hear you, bro. I pump me. So I, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Like, And I know that Quell and, and, and Mandu and both Mikey and KK could, could vouch for this. Um, It's no different than if one of them. Um, well, let me, let me not even go. Let me start from what you said, that point. You, you're right. We, we, we have to accept the fact that um 
there are individuals who that lifestyle started somewhere in particular. And I, it's, 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 it's only natural that they feel a certain way that they hear that something went somewhere else and nobody gave them acknowledgement um, and like like they just claimed it for their own. That's that's a that's exactly exactly exactly. Genuine. I don't think nobody up here will just doubt that. You think I'm saying? Um, a, a, a lot of it where it came from to, and I think Shaquille kind of broke that down. Is that you know it's, it, dudes had no knowledge of going left or right. It's just that individuals went with what was the wave, and nobody had any knowledge if anything was uh, uh, you know authenticated. Um, if anything was given approval or somebody said yo you can do this individuals hearts was not tied into it like that individuals was just operating under the premise that they was pushing something that their their elders their elders who they know to be official gave them authorization to do so it came from a different space and um it wasn't until all of the other stuff came out later on that individuals began to unearth like what we what we're doing now trying to get to the the underlying objective as to how we got certain stuff and a lot of the stuff that came to us, as the Quell's point, came to us based on deception and deceit. Um, but there's nobody up here that I, that I personally know, all of these brothers and any individuals that we do mm -hmm. know would not be willing to basically say, yo, this is how something goes. We're not going to oh, we not gonna adhere to that. Now, I don't know nobody like that that would just do that. Um, but I do understand individuals' way of thinking over here where I'm from. Like, yo, you know, we've been doing this this long. Like, who cares? Like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it does rub people that way because people been getting killed, going to prison for it, mm -hmm. shedding blood, getting their blood shed. It's like, it's, it's so much stuff that has actually happened that individuals feel like, damn, enough is enough. We got our own way of bopping and doing things over here. So while individuals might feel a little little salty, it, it, it's, it's not our fault that we was misled and by our president. Yeah, for sure. For that's sure. The, that's only where the misunderstanding comes from and stuff like that, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Quell, yeah, yeah, Quell yeah. wanted to... Uh, so, my, my, my take on that is this, is like, I, I never believed that anybody would have a, a commodity on a particular name. Like you said, my, my father and all them, they wasn't in Vietnam, but they took on a moniker of, yo, what's up, blood? What's up? Because brothers was coming home from Vietnam, and that, that word was spread around, um, like, not, not lightly, but heavily. Um, I look at it like this, right? Um, no one has a commodity. It's like we had no commodity on hip hop. If it went somewhere else, it went somewhere else. It's like we had no, we had no trademark on that, where we can hold on to that name as an English word. But when it comes to blood, this is what I believe. I believe that um, the checking part and to be able to show respect would came more so if you took an actual hood, which some did, an actual hood from LA, and you claiming that hood, that particular hood. I believe that you, at some point you should show respect and reach out and try to and, and try to work it out to the point where you acknowledge by the foundation of that particular hood. But the word blood itself, I don't really agree too much on that, but definitely hood. If you are Compton Pyro, there should be no reason why in New York somebody created a hood called Compton Pyro and not try and at some point reach out to LA and say, look, man, forgive us for being misguided. We want to do the right way. Can y'all bless us? You follow what I'm saying? But that's what let, me say, let, me, let, me, let me let me say this to that right. So the whole blood, you know, I, I gave a little background to it, you yeah, know, yeah. on, on the beginning, right? How it began, right? So the whole blood thing on over here is a, is it was a whole different type of movement. It's the way that the bloods move, the way that we move, and the way that we we got out, and the way that you know we were structured that everybody understood that was out here. That's why I said even the ones in California from San Diego to San Jose, you know, it took a while to get that respect because it took them a while to get right. it. You, understand, you know what I mean? And so I, I get you, there's no monopoly on the word blood, right? right. You can do whatever, but that comes with a, a, a different type of, uh, 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 it comes with something else attached to to that when you say that. You know what I mean? It's like if you if you a New York blood and, and you come out here and you say you you a New York blood, people expect you to act according to to how bloods move to the culture to the ways, yeah, yeah, to the way to where. And if you don't know how bloods move, you know what I mean? Then you just saying that you a blood and what? You know what I mean? Right. So because so you really don't, you really don't know how you really don't know how blood. I understand though, out of necessity, 
that, you know, you came together just like when I told you how the Bloods came together because of, to, as a resistance to the Crip movement that was coming down. Right? Y'all 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 came together as a resistance to the to the to the uh his yeah, Latino right. movement, the Latin King thing that was coming down. Right? And I get that. But then you you do your own structure of how you want to put that together and don't call it blood. Call it Bronxville, you know what I mean? Brownsville, call it, you know what I mean? Whatever. But when you start using shit like, you know, the Harlems over here or the Brims or the Bonnie Hunters or the Pa Rose, yeah, that, all I that comes that. with all that, that comes with it. I'm talking about all that comes with a different type of same thing with blood. All that comes with it. Millers, Miller gangsters. You know, remember I was saying every neighborhood got their own MO on how they get out. Right. Right. That's so if you if you if you saying you're a Brims, the Brims get out a certain way. That's the problem. They are they bloods, but but bloods, but understand that they Brims. Just like it's like it's like the Hoovers. Yeah. Hoover that's Groovers. That's Hoover Groovers get out a certain way. You know what I mean? You can't say that. You you a Hoover in in, in, in North Carolina, and, and and no Hoovers came down there to show you how to get in. That's that's like open up a McDonald's franchise, and nobody came to show y'all how to how to cook the McDonald fries, or how to put a Big Mac together, right. or how that, you know y'all just calling yourself McDonald's. That's called I, copyright I, infringement. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> I, look, I agree with you. I agree with you one hundred and ten percent. But that's what I was saying. If For sure. I say if I start a set. Gangster Killer Bloods, there's no set whatsoever called that other than Gangster Killer Bloods. But if I call myself, let's say, 5'9 Brim, or I call myself Brim anything, then that's different. I said that should have been a situation where you reach out and say, look, we're But, but, but the Bloods are attached to that, though. When you say you're a Blood, right? the Bloods move differently. Again, right. Bloods so, move differently. That's why it's a difference. So let me give uh, clarity. If, if, if you start, let's say, a, let's say, a Bloodhood in L.A., and if somewhere else on the other side of California, someone starts another blood set, do they actually literally check in to get to say uh, qualified or rectified? Listen, or man, it's been like, neighborhoods. You, you listen, I'm 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 gonna I'm let you in on I'm gonna let you in on a little uh a little unknown little fact about LA. It's been thousands, thousands of little small little neighborhoods that try to get started and somebody in, in somebody's neighborhood and end up getting smashed on. And you don't even hear about them no more. Am I right, Zoe? You're all kind of little branch offs. Yeah. They either you either you either gonna be this over here, but there ain't gonna be none of that. Now say for what? instance this, just for an example, the rapper six nine. That's right. from Bloods, right? But you had the rapper from L.A. Slim 400, rest in peace, my boy, right? Yeah. When, when the 6 9 was tripping up under Blood on national TV, talking this blood, 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 right? Another Blood from L.A. was, remember, Slim 400 came to New York to look for his butt because he wasn't doing it right. He don't re Slim 400, rest in peace, was spilling that if you really repping it like you're supposed to rep, you repping it wrong. So I'm going to come to your town and show you how to do this since you've been, you know, you're doing it wrong. So just for a prime example, that type of uh, of understanding what's going on. Like a lot of cats is upset because, like you said, you know, uh, uh, crip, even the blood, Crips and Bloods is misusing on how L.A. do it. Like you said, it's a protocol. You know what I'm saying? It's chapters to gangs. You got a, a gangs that got... 13 chapters to it and each in each game is up under a protocol uh, obeying how this game is ran right you know what i mean so, yeah, just so you know, I, I, I had a, i had a, uh, a statement and a question 169 was not blood yeah i'm gonna say that so so listen so that's why <laughs> slim 400 came yeah. down because he realized that this dude was Whatever he was saying, yeah. trying to say, you get what I'm saying. So you had a dude from LA that didn't like what he was doing and jumped on a plane and came to New York to check his ass. Yeah. Oh, the other, uh, uh, what I have wanted to say is too. Um, <laughs> he say six this, this is for, Yeah, he was, this is uh, for uh, whack, uh, big whack though. Uh, now you might, you might, you might know as well as far as the UBN is concerned, like because you had the UBN over there, right? But there was a difference because 
we we like on the West, we automatically took up not just the UBN, but riding the five and that. Like, how was that structured out West though? Because oh, so, I, so, what I knew so, a lot so, of neighborhoods so. wasn't representing the five and wasn't under the U. So 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 I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna speak on this very briefly because you know what I mean there's paperwork involved with that. UBN is a prison gang. UBN is started off as a prison gang. It's just like you know, it was a few prison gangs. So it was, you know, UBN, Bloodline, Black Gorilla Families, uh, you know, you had and, and, and a few other ones, right? So these are all federal type of prison games that are being watched by people, right? So that's what, so when people say, oh, uh, you know, they from UBN, they was, you know, that, that a lot of people out here took that very seriously because there's paperwork attached to that. You know what I mean? That's, that's an organization. And so that's another thing that what a lot of people, you know, got upset about. You know, you know, I think that was the main thing a lot of people got upset about it, the whole UBN thing. Yeah. Yeah, yo, you know, and, and you know what, you know, can y'all can y'all hear me? Go ahead. Hey. You know, I don't know if y'all can hear yeah, me. I, and, and I I I definitely see you and you and you and y'all saying big whack and quell, y'all actually saying the same thing. Y'all actually agree with each other, and I agree with y'all. I this is where I, I believe the culture went when it's straight over here because to Quell's point, you can see at the beginning of it, individuals were fighting and banding themselves together to fight against what, what was, was obviously a common foe. But then now, after some time of uh, whacking Zoe, what we started seeing was there was individuals in the, on the East Coast that, that was trying to be more West Coast than y'all. And that's, mm, no. that's, that's what we started seeing, and that's something that we could really relate to, because it was like, yo, hold on, a lot of a lot of us didn't have no beef with with the Crips. A lot of us wasn't walking no. around talking about, yo, we gonna bang on rolling sixties or we gonna bang on eight tray. We didn't have no. That wasn't what was going on in New York at that time in the prison mm -hmm. system. Now maybe individuals that went home and that started to be the culture in the streets, and then those individuals would find themselves getting locked up and then that merger between these different philosophies what ultimately became like the way of the culture that that took on its own monster in and of itself not only in the streets but in the prison so i was i was baffled because i'm like yo where somebody who always was was for the unification of black people and for our people in general i'm thinking like yo what is it what is this fascination that we all right with fighting crips for we never fought crips you think i'm saying wow. so why is it that I'm, that's what i'm saying our perspective i started seeing more of us mimicking what you guys was doing in the 80s in the 90s before the rodney king truce uh, before the truce well, after yeah, rodney it, king. It, it, like, it ain't like, really happening like that no more it's not even really happening like that no more out here. We out here, you know, you know, no one know, you know what I mean? We out here really pushing some positive stuff and out here trying to get it's money, changed. man. Game, game we out here changed. trying to band together. We out here trying to collaborate. You know, we networking. We and we doing stuff. You know what I mean? To put to push for a positive change. You know, in our in the mindsets because you know my whole thing. My what I tell my youth is if you change your mindset, if you change your thinking, you will change your results. Right, and so my whole thing is give them a different information, give them you know a different way of of thinking at th of thinking about certain things. You know what I mean? And they, you know, and I, and after they finish my program, they got to they have to write a lag essay, and a lag means learn it, apply it, and give it away. They have to write a paragraph on what they learned, how they have uh, applied it to their life. And how they giving it away in their in their walk and in, in their everyday life, you know what I mean? And I, I think I mean I believe you know that you know the organization that we I work with and and those organization, you know we are trying to plant those seeds and trying to plant those seeds for success in these young people because listen I understood that you know how things came together and how we banded together to fight a common foe. 
right? But now the common foe that we what we fighting is 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 the world. You know the social media stuff. How are they doing with our kids? And you know how they trying to, you know, um, uh, portray us and how they trying to give us our own our negative our, our narrative. You know what I mean? So it's it's about us now coming together and, and really kingdom building and really pushing some positive positive stuff and you know the gang shit again. You know every neighborhood. If it wasn't no blood, if it wasn't Christian blood, it'd have been something else. Because that's how tribes get down. That's that's how areas get down. When you when you grew up when you grew up in a neighborhood around certain people, y'all have a certain way of doing things. And when people come into that you know it's uncomfortable when we get outside of that we uncomfortable we're, we're in our natural environment our neighborhood but we're so used to being comfortable that we 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 don't like being uncomfortable but we have to get used be, used to being uncomfortable if we really want to end up being comfortable um let me ask you this on um, big whack because um, you know, when I came home, the information that was given to us, when I mean came home, when I turned, when I was turned blood, when I was turned down move, uh, you know, Rackers Island, you know, um, the information that was given, y'all can you know, please, because um, I have like a lot of static in the yeah, background. Yeah, background, yeah. Please speak up. Um, so when I turned blood, we was told, we was told to turn to, if we ever went to the West Coast, we was taught to rep Miller gangsters. Um, that was one of the lessons that was that was taught in our lessons. Um, I guess OG Mac was telling people that he was one of the Millers from the West Coast. And if we was ever to go to the West Coast, we were supposed to rep a, a West Coast, we were supposed to rep the West Coast hood and not the East Coast hood that we was repping. Did you ever hear about that? You ever hear about any of these connections? And what do y'all think about official chapters being given to the East Coast from West Coast OG? No. No, I, I I've never I've never heard about that. You know what I mean? That that's like um uh, um that's ridiculous. Basically, you know what I mean? You can't come out here and, and, and he was setting you up for disasters. <laughs> you can't come out here, rep another hood, and not know nobody. That's like going into a lion's den with a pork chop suit on. No, no, we rep the set. The Miller think, gangsters from the set. I, I know, we but I think going, that, yeah, we were supposed to go to them and be like, "We Millers, you know, we New York, we from New York Bloods, but we under the Miller that whole line. Yeah. This is what was given yeah. to us." Yeah, but I'm Max, saying this. So, so I uh, know no, what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I, I thought you had something else. Yeah. Ma Ma yeah. So Max listen, you go, you go, you go over to Millers. You tell them, you know, I rap a Miller gangsters from New York. They're gonna ask, well, who, 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 who started your set? And you tell them, and they, and they don't know that person, you right? Know, I, I, they don't, they don't know that person. They don't have nobody in their family, family that knows that person. Because a lot of times they can, they can be rapping somebody, you know, family member, like the family member put them on. People gonna start asking questions. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I, that's I, I was always been. A, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, in the '80s, when I got locked up in the '80s, I, I'm in a blood module, right? And they had this dude come in a blood module. Um, he said he was from Long Beach, Pyro. So, are there any Pyro's in Long Beach? Huh? Oh, no. no. It's not a blood in Long Beach. I see what you're They're saying. Not yeah. You feel me? It's not a blood in Long Beach. It's not one blood set in Long Beach. Yeah, so right. you can't come. You can't come in a blood module. Talking about you from Long Beach, Pyro. Ain't such thing. Ain't no bloods <laughs> in Long Beach. No. Wow. And I know the leaders of Long Beach insane, insane to the membrane. My homeboy. Yeah, yeah, this sure. was some they, brothers. They insane. insane, rollers, twenties. You know what I mean? Little tiny rascals. You know. The skateboarders. <laughs> the skateboarders. You know what I mean? They and, and 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 Max said a lot of stuff, but. Sometimes I think people would make up their own thing and pass it on as if Max said it, because that, that sounds ridiculous. There ain't no way in the world I'm going to be GKB over here and then go to L.A. and talk about I'm Miller. <laughs> no, but, would you, but, but you you rep what you rep in New York, and Cats going to respect that. Yeah. And team it's, up. It's some, it's, it's, some, it's some cats out here right now that I ran to in California prison. One of them ended up getting paralyzed by the police 
in a riot. He, he was a rider. You know what I mean? He ended up getting paralyzed. They shot him. But he was from, he was from Dipset. You know what I mean? He he came out here repping that. But he, he was a rider and Cash embraced it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was it's, it, it was, yeah. it's it's a couple of them. They came out here. They they came out here with some with some you know, some some rapper, some you know, some entertainers from New York. You know what I mean? Hung out in the neighborhood. Some shit popped off. They, you know what I mean? They mounted up too, you feel me? And got caught up. But, you know, in, in cash respect, they rep what you rep. If that's your neighborhood, if that's your spot, and you want to put that, that, that moniker on the end of it, such and such blood or such and such crip or such and such rider or whatever you want to put on that, you know what I mean? And, you know, th th those street corners you grew up in, Developed your character to the point where you survived millions, I mean, not millions, but yeah, millions of seconds in prison. You know, where you survived being locked up with other, you know, individuals that, you know, that you had to fight against and this and that. You learned that from the neighborhood you grew up in, consciously and subconsciously. You learned how to survive. You learn how to be aggressive and when not to be aggressive. You learn how to compromise. You learn how to be diplomatic. You learn how to move. Testament to the fact that you you right here, right now, on camera, still alive. In spite of all the things you've been through. So whatever neighborhood that is that then gave you those lessons, you rep that. You know what I mean? It, 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 look, look, look. And, it, and it, it's already in your heart. You rep it by the way you walk. Right. And, and, and you know, it's in a, an, on another uh, change in the net, not the narrative, but just letting you know that out here in L.A., you had apples, oranges, and grapes. Right. Money hunters, Hoovers, Bus and, and Grape Street. Then you Unheard had, of back in the days. You feel what I'm saying? So you had to heard blood, of back in the day. Blood, in the crips, in the criminals together. Yeah. Right. And then you end up having the uh, grooving, moving, and the Inglewood families were together. Hoover, A Trey Gangster, and Inglewood families. You get what I'm saying? So then you got the bloods fighting the bloods and the crips fighting the blood like the crips, each other like it's unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? So it's so, all it's all mixed up. So we got something like this now out 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 here in Brooklyn. You got some some hoods, the bloods and the crips is like one. They like you can't distinguish one from the other. And they gang up against folks, gangster disciples. So like that's how it is out here. Like they got something out here called Cho and Wo, Cho and Woo. You yo, bro, this thing is so real out here. These little young homies will lay anything out flat. Look, I, I know back in the days I, I, know, I know back in the days when um, you know when uh, we was going out of town and you know and, and, and doing our traveling you know the GD's always been a problem for West Coast cats. We always had to band together in order to get a, you know to fight them dudes. Always, it's been going on since the eighties. We band together with some Crips to, to fight GD in, in other states. You know what I mean? Because they was doing the same thing we was doing. You know, remember Ice Cube had his song, that song. Well, he said the St. Louis niggas want their cornerback. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know, I had a different story. I had a uh, OG Babyface. From uh, from uh, you know, the Gangster Disciples, you know, rest in peace. For sure, uh, for sure. Uh, he he took over the the chapter in Atlanta. I teamed up with him. You know okay. what I'm saying? And, and we had, you know, it was you know, you know, the whole Hooper card. You know, they looked at it. You know, Terrell was with me. Baby uh, took him. He was with. You know what I'm saying? We cooked up with him. And I had an opportunity on the East Coast to bring. I brought the Latin Kings, the Gangster Disciples. And uh, the Vice Lords together on stage, the youngsters at um, Juliet High School in Chicago, in that's Illinois. You feel what I'm saying? I mean, that's I got pieces of this stuff, and that's what I've been doing. I've been contributing a lot of my gang intervention on the, the Midwest and the East Coast. You that's feel what I'm saying? That's, that's what's up. That's what's up. Gang intervention 
um, let's take another turn in the show and let's talk about all the things that the OGs up here is doing to better connect with the community. Um, and you know, help out, help out the help out the past. Let me know what y'all doing. Um, let's talk about that now. You know what I'm saying? So you know, y'all go one by one. We're going to start and start. I see you got a book up there, big black. Set it off. Oh yeah, so you know, I got I got a motivational book out available on Amazon. It's called "Get Your Shit Together: A Guide to Getting Out Your Own Way." You know, because I had to get out my own way in order for me to, you know, start making strides of, you know, uh, I, I, I uh, uh, believe that I'm a success story. Uh, after surviving what I survived, uh, you know, they're being in bondage for you know almost thirty years. Um, to to now being a a homeowner, uh, a business owner, a, you know, a father, um, you know, and, and and several other things, you know, motivational speaker, a mentor, and so on and so forth. What, what um, name is on it? Huh? What's, what's e. L. Uh, I go by the, the pen name E L Hawk. You know E L Hawk. E dot E L Hawk. Huh? E L E dot L Hawk. All right. Yeah, put, put that. Put it's that. It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Send that. Send that to me, Nike. Be on the phone called, later. Let me see. Get yo. Hold on. Oh, all right. I got you. Get yo. Get your shit together. Hold on. I'm looking for S H Y T. Get your yeah. shite. Get your <laughs> shite together. It's S H Y T. Uh, I but heard, I, uh, I, 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 I do, I do you three entry. I do adult re-entry. I'm about to share it, I'm about to share it in the chat. All the time, uh, I do you three entry. I do uh, adult re-entry. Um, uh, I'm a re-entry case manager, man. We gotta connect, bro. All the time, brother. I also, I also have a, a residential drug and alcohol detox. Uh, in Pasadena, so uh, called Passion Recovery Detox. Um, you can look that up. Um, but yeah, you know, and also, you know, I, I work with Zoe and um, a few other individuals with their nonprofits on uh, working with the children and, you know, uh, putting the programs together and so on, so on and so forth. I do put programs together as well. Could y'all mute up? I hear static in the background. Please mute up if y'all not talking. Okay. Who driving the car? So, so I am, I am, but I'm on mute though. Oh, well, okay. So, whack, if you done, I'm gonna tell you what I do. You know, I do a variety of things. I'm, I got, my, I'm like an octopus out here. You know what I mean? I'm, on, I'm on a moving on a national level. I hit different cities with culture, with different change. What I do is, I, I have a radio show called Compton Politics Talk Radio, and I also just got a book out. That book is called. AI from a black guy. I'm into the what's going on today. I'm gonna take you to the AI stuff on what we gonna be getting take over. They're gonna finna take us over. It's important to the so I'm like Paul Revere. Now I got a program where I help guys go to prison. I do inter tree, not entry, re-entry. I do inter tree. I help guys go to prison. Why? Because our brothers are still getting busted. They still going to jail. There's still people making mistakes. A lot of these guys ain't got no family members. They don't know how to read no transcripts. They don't know why they getting 25 years of the stupidity because they don't know they didn't read the crime before they did it. You get what I'm saying? Now, if we start educating them, let's read the crimes first before you become a criminal. So if you find out you're going to get 35 years for selling uh, uh, putting an SOS pad in a in a Coca Cola bottle because that's a bomb. Yeah, you you got to read why you don't you ain't gonna do that. So that's my education. I help guys go to prison. Um, I'm a national speaker. I do national speaking on any level. You give me the subject, I'm gonna study for it, and I'm gonna bring it to you. Um, I'm trying to really educate the people about this AI thing, man. That's my real movement because it's so important for us to learn this because we all been dealing with AI all our life. We've been dealing with artificial intelligence all our life, artificial food, artificial soda, artificial everything, bro. So we already they already had it in front of us. You know what I mean? Alexa, Siri, smart car, A track took out cassettes took out A track, DVDs took out vhs d 
digital took out analog film. AI has took out software. The reason why I say it's important for everybody to put chat GPT on your phone because the mothership has landed. Mm. Everything is here. <laughs> he landed. Well, okay. Hold on, I'm, Rick, look, I'm on the, screen, I'm, the highlighted, let me let them know that's Big Wax book. That's highlighted on the screen. That's the link. If y'all want to cop the book, that's the link right there on Amazon.com. I just put it in the um chat. Also, also put y'all links in the back chat, and I'll and I'll if y'all got YouTube, Instagrams, whatever, put them in the back chat so I can put them in the chat as well. You're excuse me. Oh yeah, you can get my book AI. You can get my book AI from a black guy. It's on Amazon right now, and it's free to read right now. I'm giving it up for free. I'm giving free knowledge. AI from a black guy. Uh, AI from a black guy on 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 Amazon Kindle. I'm giving it away for free right now. I'm giving away free game. I got you. It. Ain't gonna get this. You're not gonna get this from nobody. I wouldn't supposed to even get this book out like this because I wasn't supposed to be this damn advanced. You get what I'm saying? So I got free education. Okay. No matter if you're poor or rich, dumb or smart, you're gonna fall into AI. It's important to put chat GPT on your phone because now you got to start putting our black history in AI because AI was told not to know anything about black history. Put your name in there and see if AI know about you. That's not good if it don't. It's not nothing bad about it, but it's something bad about it. If you put something bad in it, you got to put your history like whack. Whack got to put his nonprofit information in there. Mike, you got to put your nonprofit information in there, who you are, what you're doing. Kiki, you got to put your personal information in AI. You got to talk to this machine. You got to create a friend in this machine. So you can keep up, so you can keep your stories going for your grandkids, your great grandkids, and uh, just I, 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 alone. I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar. It's KK, by the way, but I, I'm familiar. I'm familiar with ChatGPT though as well, and all of the I was actually earlier. I was about to tell the brothers we was just in a virtual room. My boy just created a virtual office space that you can actually go into, create an avatar and all that, and come into there. And I just want to be able to create it, basically like creating a back channel and back room for all of us to be on, like I just start just pulling up so we can really have conversations and build without anybody, you know what I'm saying? What, what, are you, what are you talking about? What virtual reality? I got Oculus. What are you talking about? The one I was the one I'm talking about, no, not that. I'm going to show you right now the name of it. Um, Vatim. Technology is Vatim. Oh, so, okay. Batam actually, it's it's almost like um, um, Decentraland. If you're familiar, you're familiar. You heard of Decentraland? Because Decentraland is a big, it's it's a big thing. So it's like it's like that. I mean, but it's actual building space where you can go in on your phone. You actually go into okay. the space, create an avatar, and be in there on your phone. So you don't need no glasses. You don't need you don't need none of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so how that's fast they're moving with that technology, though. That's how fast they're actually moving with that stuff. I'm, a, I'm actually doing a presentation at the California Endowment on March on March 5th, and I'm talking about cold bias. Cold bias is what they're doing to Michelle Obama and Venus Williams. It's so cold that they put the the, the description of Michelle Obama and and um and, and venus williams in ai right so you just imagine the descriptions that they put about venus williams it's real strong powerful won all these championships so what do you think ai brought her back as ai brought venus williams back as a man because they don't know who what black women are so it's our job to put this information in every wow. day develop this was going on it's called cold bias i'm going to be speaking at california endowment center on March fifth, educating about cold bias, okay. and it, that's what they do. That's what. That's why you see them talking about Michelle Obama is a man because they. That she got a swipe because they're using cold bias from yo, AI. So, yo, so can how can if we if we're not there with you in person, will that be in? Will that be virtual something that we can see? Um, Let's online? make it okay. To put it like this, let's make a YouTube like this, and I'm gonna go live with y'all. Period is y'all. So as I'm there, y'all gonna be there. You get it? I'm gonna have my I, my device set up. Let's set up the date. This is what we doing right now. And now y'all will be live with me at the whole conference. Happy. I still happy. 
Do it. And I'm going to send y'all a flyer. You know what I mean? This is major. I mean, this is education. I'm dealing with an organization called NAPI. N-A-A-P-Y. NAPI. They're the ones out here in Los Angeles that's fighting against the, all the school boards that's not giving us the money for the black kids. The, the whole school boards are scared of them. You feel what I'm saying? And that's what we got to bring into the community. Substance. Stuff that these kids, like NASA, bro. All this other shit, and they need things that's gonna make sense. NASA looking for black kids. You feel me? We need inventors, astronauts. That's what I'm going for. And all this stuff, all the diamonds are in a rough in the hood. Look at us. Look, I'm doing AI, bro. I don't know shit about AI. I know about HI, human intelligence. Right. And that's where we got to come in at. We got to bring this human intelligence in to tell AI what to do to get control back of our community. If you don't know any substance about how to fix it, go ask, go ask in GBT, chat GBT for real. Go ask GBT to give you a structure on how to fix young people and watch what it give you. That is our best friend, brothers and sisters that's listening. Chat GPT is your best friend, better besides the friends that you got on here, besides the friends that's sitting next to you. When you by yourself and you can't think nothing out, use chat GPT and just ask that motherfucker a question. Talk to Le have anybody ever really sat at home and talked to Alexa? Alexa, have anybody even really sat at home and talked to Siri? I mean, hold a conversation with her. The Siri got a lot of stuff, man. Talk to her. I mean, if you don't want to talk on the phone, go home and talk to Siri seriously. Yeah, I do. I do it. I do it all the time. My wife be laughing at me. Not for real. I mean, I'm dead serious. I be having My wife hates Siri. conversations with Siri. I mean, with Alexa. Facts. Yes. Yes. Yes, brothers. And that's what my that's my message, bro. That's what I'm on. Like I say, I don't know nothing about H.I., but we've been living up under. No, I don't know nothing about A.I., but I tell you this, we know about H.I., the intelligence that we've been surviving in the streets, surviving in the world, waking up in the morning, getting people to love you. I mean, how look, it was human intelligence, how we came together tonight. It was human intelligence that created A.I. Right. So that's where I'm landing my plane. I do a lot of stuff. I got the radio. I mean, I do the movies. I got the film production. Brother, I'm like ready, homie. I'm like, eh, I'm ready, bro. I'm excited about my life. I got a second win. You know what I mean? I know now. I'm 58 years old. I know now. It ain't about what I've been through. It's the age I get to to tell the story. Right. It's the age I get to. I'm 58 and I'm able to tell my stories. And guess what? They're facts. People, look, it's not about the truth no more. I can tell you a truthful lie. And you're going to believe me. But if, when you come with these facts, like everybody on the panel, we speaking facts, brother. That's what we got to bring these youths. Facts. If I can't show these people that I'm from the Rick Ross crew and show them with a picture with me at 18 with Rick Ross back in 84, they're not going to listen to me. If I can't say uh, uh, the way I met you, y'all brothers, and it really break it down how I met y'all. I'm from the West Coast, y'all from the East Coast, and now we got something called We Nation, West Coast and East Coast together collaborating, which people don't even understand how powerful we really are. This is not our first time talking to each other, right? We A got some plans. We talked to each other. We've been talking for years. We got time in now. Yo, let me. Yes. Let me now that you say that, Zoe and Mikey. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. Let me sh let us shout out, man, Jay Burton and, and Joey P, because they are instrumental in, in 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 all of us even being here by law's permission. Um, the reality is that we're all we're all here because us getting together. But even though our brother Jay Burton, I know he was, I know he called out the gun here. No, pardon me, y'all. I, we got our brother that's been locked up 35 years, man. But he's been mm -hmm. instrumental, man, in helping to connect the dots. Oh, oh, a lot of people together, man. Free oh, Jay Burton. A lot of people right. together, man. Free so Jay our Burton. brother, man, right. is instrumental, man. And, 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 and despite him being caged up, 
he's been linking up a lot of heavy hitters, man. A lot of brothers, man. So yeah. you know, that's our brother, man. We're talking, yeah, man. He's he supposed to be here tonight. You know, man, he grew up, man, in Nicholson Gardens, man. Shout out to the brothers and sisters over there in Nicholson Gardens and Watts. So he got a, a serious story to tell. But that yeah. brother right there, man, him and Joey, it's like, man, these dudes is the common denominator, man. They're the, they're the best kept secret, man. They bringing us together, man, and we gonna do some big things. I'm confident, but I know Mikey wanted us everybody to go around, but um, Big Wack and uh, Zo went, but um, what about you, Quell? Yeah, so basically, when I was in prison, one of the things I wanted to do was come back home and give back to my community. I was once the problem. I wanted to be a solution at some point. So I did, I had a 20 life bid. I did 22 years. That's not me. That's, that's, that's that car Moshe in. <laughs> so. Nah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm mute. I'm mute. I'm mute, big homie. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm okay. mute, you heard? So I came after 22 years. I wanted to get back to the community. So this brother named Trife Gangster, he was the executive director. He was also under the hood that I started. Um, he was the executive director of an organization called G Mac Incorporated. Gangsters making astronomical community changes. So he hired me on board as an outreach worker, whereas I work with the youth to, you know, help change their mindset, get them out there, try to get jobs. If they into sports, we give them to sports. If they into music. We had another agency called Man Up that had a full house and help full house and studio production um crew that would get these kids out there to do the music they want to do they had the dreams of becoming a rapper then we'll show them that way anything to get them off the streets so what we work with we work with high risk youth not at risk high risk these kids are already gang bangers they were already shooters we was trying to get them off the streets um we was under the band of cure violence which started in chicago shout out to um Marcus McAllister and 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 um my, my boy I forgot his name right now oh man they they was a national trainers um Kobe that's his name they was a national trainers for cure violence from state to state so anyway under the cure violence component you have three parts and that three parts is number one is to interrupt the transmissions of violence the second stage was to change the mindset of the youth and the third stage to get the community involved and change community norms. So what happens is we had a team called Violence Interrupters and the Violence Interrupters team had a supervisor. The outreach worker team had a supervisor and I became a program manager after a period of time. And what the our Violence Interrupters do is we might hear from sources in the hood that uh, a beef about the brew. Uh, Mikey B and Moshe about to go at it and they both part the gangs and their team about to go at it. So uh, it's, we have to get out there and de-escalate the situation. We was trained to de-escalate by taking vert training, Violence Interruption, violent interruption reduction training. Um, it's like a one week course, you know, the, all the cue words, what to say, how to say it, you know, and instead of and, and don't say anything, it's going to excite the situation even more. So we send people out there that might have a relation with the two individuals that have beef or whatever, or the crew that have beef. And one one group go this way and the other part go this way and they, they try to talk it down, de-escalate it to the point we get them into the office to shake hands, man, and squash that for the moment and hopefully forever. You know what I'm saying? So that was the first stage. The next stage was we try to find it the youth that's really want to do something with their lives, or we try to convince them they need to do something with their lives, um, show them the importance of education and the adverse effects of not having it. So we'll get them into the office with the outreach, outreach workers who would in turn, they would talk to them, speak to them, and find out exactly what they want to do, find out their story, why they do the things they're doing, why they robbing. We don't know. We find out maybe their mother's on drugs. They don't have no father figure in their life. They know brothers got to eat. That's why they rob. Or this person is killing because he had anger issues, man. You know, he he felt like at home, he don't get the love he received. He get it from the streets. And then he was misguided by the streets. Um, environmental influences and peer pressure. So we try to work on that and break that down to the point where we can get him to maybe go out and get a job. We teach him how to do resumes. Um, we get suits from this place like, to donate suits to us. And um. We dress these kids up and send them on interviews and, and get them jobs. Some stay with it and, and some go back to the streets. Um, and then the, the next stage is like if somebody was to get shot and killed, we have what we call a shooting response where we go to the streets and we bring the community out there. You know, we put up flyers days before, but then 72 hours and get the people out there. And we speak against the norm, speak against what's going on in our community. It's not that we go against the, the norms is people get shot today and people forget about it tomorrow. Are we trying to break that cycle? We get the people involved, the community involved, the older people involved, and help us try to raise these kids again like it was. I'll, I'll be 58 this year, so how it was when I was a kid, the community raised you. So that was the main focus of this organization. We was funded by various, organize, various organizations plus the city. It was a good thing until I, you know, I got sick. I ended up with congestive heart failure, 
and I was out of work from 2019, and I finally got a heart transplant in 2022, and now I live in Texas. I'm a homeowner now, and I'm living my dream. I've been home, um, this will be eight years this September, so I'm just doing good right now, laid back and relaxing. That's pretty much my story. Alhamdulillah. Wow. What about you? What about you, man, do warrior? What man, do I even hear no more? Where you been at? What? <laughs> Go ahead, man, do it. Yo, Moshe, tell them about yourself, man. Tell them what you do, man. Yo, man, nah, so thank you for that, Mikey, man. I, this, I'm going on three and a half years. I'm going on three and a half years after spending 22 years in, incarcerated. Um, since I've been home, um, I've been really just thankful, man, to work with an agency known as the Center for Community Alternatives. This agency has offices in Syracuse where Mikey is stationed at. Actually, Mikey partners with my agency out there where he's at. Um, they also have offices in Rochester, and they have offices in New York City, in Brooklyn, um, where I've been working with them since October of 2020. Um, that agency is an alternative to incarceration agency, which means that they are on the front lines of working with individuals who are considered to be justice impacted, not only those who are being released from these institutions, but also the youth themselves who are being released or who are currently incarcerated in these youth facilities like Crossroads and Horizons in, in New York City as well. I started off in the agency as an employment mentor, but you know, due to my hard work and efforts, I was promoted to the employment coordinator position. And again, you know, due to my high, my 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 my, my ability to be able to get things done, I was I was promoted to the assistant director of community programs. At the time that I was promoted, we had two programs under our community community based program unit in the youth services department in the agency um and i'm not speaking so much about those eight those um programs that are dealing with the youth facilities i'm talking about those that deal specifically with community-based programming we had two programs now we have a total of 10 programs operating under our purview and in each i co-manage 10 10 youth programs which are centered primarily re regarding helping individuals who are justice impacted and those who are not justice impacted and not only Brownsville, but Canarsie, but also in um, East New York, in Flatbush, in Fort Greene, Atlantic Terminals, um, um, among other places. What what we do primarily is help individuals from the ages of 14 to, to 24 gain uh, career readiness skills like resume writing. Um, in addition to that, how to conduct yourself during an interview, digital, digital marketing skills, um, among other soft, soft skills to help them get get um, into the workplace. We also teach individuals how to start their own businesses for individuals who want to become their own CEOs, et cetera. Um, in addition to that, um, I've been doing a lot of work with another program that's also under our banner that helps with the youth become knowledgeable about food inequities and food inadequacies in underserved communities, helping them go out into the community to, do, to conduct community mapping to help them get an understanding as to why our people, black and brown bodies in particular, are being deprived of the nutrients that uh, uh, we need as a community to sustain ourselves. For instance, what these studies have, have concluded, the youth in this case, is that not only are we paying more for less quality goods, but in more affluent communities, they're paying less for more superior goods. So the, the question is why? You went out, Moshe. We can't so, hear you. So, nah, that was the um, GPS bought me. So that's what we've been doing regarding that program. So we've been asking our youth as they get elevated to other programs that, that are under my purview, how to come up with viable solutions as to how they can overcome these oppressive conditions in their communities. So we've just been helping the youth in that regard on various levels, helping them get connected to academic programs, not only helping them get their GEDs, but also get connected to college, college programs and so on and so forth. Just tonight, I was actually hosting um, an event in Brownsville on, on Livonia. We we we, uh, we collaborated with the Bonello Foundation. Shout out to Stacy Chanel and, and all of her her, her her team and everybody who's a part of this endeavor. Patrick Stevens, Damian Rivera, Ron Robinson, and everybody who helped um, see that this could be a reality. Uh, we had a, a literally a health conference, which basically you know. So what, what we did was help the youth themselves, I mean, help the community get a better understanding of um, the, the debilitating effects of um, mental health 
physical physical health, the importance of physical health, how to protect yourself. We had Soke Hassan, Grandmaster Soke Hassan, come in and teach individuals the importance of self-defense and not so much martial arts, but martial science. The, the, the event was a success. Um, since coming home in 2020, I not only graduated with my associate's, associate's degree, but I also graduated with my bachelor's in organizational management. I graduate in September with my master's in public administration. And then after that, I'm on to get my PhD in global leadership. Um, I've been around the world since I've been home. I'm all over from Saudi Arabia to Egypt to Ethiopia to Aruba to anywhere. I've been traveling around the country. About to speak about um, the importance of higher education in prison since I am a direct recipient of that. So I've been speaking about the importance of individuals obtaining um, their degrees while they are in prison, because studies have shown that as much as much as individuals continue to educate themselves behind the wall, um, their chances of recidivating are lowered. So I encourage individuals. I think he paused this time. I think you hit a bad spot this time, y'all. Right? I just sent you we a text, front, Mikey B. We nation, we 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 putting it, we putting it, we putting in work, man. But I'm 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 just say, man, I'm I'm just thankful that Allah has uh, blessed me with this opportunity, man, to do the great things that, that I'm doing and to be affiliated with brothers like yourself and others who are, who are similarly situated doing the same thing on the front line. So, um, hopefully in the next couple of months, one week, my goal is to travel to. Uh, to try to uh, meet up with the brothers out there in O Block, um, you, know, the, you know these brothers out there, they living, they they was living tough. They still living in tough conditions. They was out there banging against each other, but right now I, I do believe that there's some peace out there, and that brothers out there offering a lot together in O Block. O Block, one of the toughest neighborhoods in, in the country. So I will be traveling out there with a contingent of individuals. So whoever wants to come out there with me, we trying to connect, spread this message, stop the violence, man, unite, and that's what that's what we doing moving forward for 2024, man. KK. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. KK. Yeah. Let them know about yourself, man. Let them know what's going on with you, my brother. Shit, I'm a modest guy, man. All right. I just been home for two years after doing 25 years. I had a 25 life sentence. Been home two years and some months now. Um, I actually just been working in the entertainment business doing Brick Squad, B100 Radio, just doing that. But since also I created a program before I came out called EM3. So now I've been working on actually building EM3 up. So EM3 uh, stands for Evolved Minds, Illuminate Men, Women, and Children. It's a fraternal beneficiary society. So this is almost similar to the Marcus Garvey movement, to where as we pull in our resources, networking, pulling individuals like us who has a, who either either do have organizations or businesses or even if they don't or even if they're in prison actually so this is a global membership based network that's actually built being built right now for us um still in the process of actually building it um, that is all I'm doing right now <laughs> working on that and really really trying to uh, uh, get that established that's something me and Jay Burton actually been working on as well um and actually bringing all of us together. We've been having discussions about it. Like that's one of the actual goals here. So whereas we can pull these things and have our own uh, uh, society and own organization to whereas we can pull these, all these resources together and be able to give us, give each other health benefits, life insurance, loans, own businesses, but it's actually the same ideology and structure that we had when we were affiliated in these other organizations you know what i'm saying but now actually doing it from a legal standpoint so that's what i'm actually doing right now mm. man do you hear yeah he good uh, uh, man yeah now nah, man do here. oh yes he is he nah, just man, do it back. back yeah he just pulled back up um okay Mikey. yeah I'm, yeah a little bit about me you know um i got a um i'm a case manager um, I've been I've been a case manager for two for two years for about two years now going on three years. Um, I work for a corporation called Peace Inc. Um, out of Syracuse, New York. Um, I started when I came home from prison after serving 25 years. Um, I started as a volunteer, um, you know, helping out in the community center, um, actually helping them. A, a, a goal setting program that I started that we actually started was and was. Um, 
doing in prison, I came, you know, I I, I made it um, usable for these youth in the community, and I changed it for them. So I started, you know, teaching these 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 the, the youth goal setting, and um, I did that for a while. Um, I didn't really need a job, so I was just showing them what I could do, showing them my work that I'm responsible, and they hired me. My first job, my first actual paycheck in my life was coming home. I was a janitor first, right? From a janitor, I was a janitor for, for a few months. That same company hired me as a case manager. Um, and I've been I've been a um a case manager for about two and a half years now. I've been traveling um around the country getting training. Y'all see me in Washington, DC, y'all see me in Chicago, um, y'all see me and I'll be in some new areas shortly. Um, I also run a fatherhood um, pro, um, program. I'm a facilitator along with two others. Um, I've been doing that for about two years now. We didn't had a, a lot of men graduate. They love the course. We build mentors. Um, we have elders in the, in the class as well as youth, um, and they connect to the program. A lot of y'all know I'm a published author. I've been, I've been writing books um, for about close to 20 years now. My first book came out in 2006, I'm Free. My company, Hood Love, Hood Love LLC. Um, me and my wife, we started that in 2005, and I published my first book in 2006. Um, I also published poetry. I, I, I got two other books on Amazon, um, Street Tales um, Street Tells and Street Tales 2, The Hood is on Fire. My most recent book is with, you know, brothers like Moshe. It's an anthology called Songs of the Condemned. Um, we have Moshe as a part of the book. Um, I mean, in a book, Baby Jim, and a lot of other people um, on that anthology as well. So, and I got more books coming right now. I'm writing a book on reentry um, and being successful in in prison and out of prison. So, y'all y'all have that book coming shortly. I also have a, I also have a few other books I'll be publishing this year. But that's about it for me. What's up, man, dude? What's good? Shout it out! Shout it out, man. You what's good, bro? Yeah, but um, just let the people. Oh, I advocate as well. Um, you know, I go talk to the um to the congressmen and the senators in New York. Um, I do a lot of advocacy. I have been to in my reentry job, in my reentry role, I have um been to court for brothers, I get people jobs, I create resumes, I get people housing, um, I mentor, I coach, I um, you know, I do a, I do a lot. I do like a so many different tasks as a reentry case manager. Um, I take I, I, I transport people to and from. I get people furniture for their homes. I connect people with donors and things of that nature. Um, I do a lot as a reentry case manager. I do whatever I can to make sure that, you know, people are connected to the resources in the community. And, you know, I help people however I can. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead big man, dude. You up next. All right. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for passing the mic. <laughs> Peace. Peace, um, bro. There's a few things uh, um, I want to... Um, speak about myself as far as things that I've done since I've been home. Um, um, when I first came home, as soon as I was released, I, I joined this um, group called Vocal, um, Voices of Community Activists and Leaders. Um, I said, we, we, we used to go run, I, listen, we done ran down on City Hall, the mayor, Albany, you know, um, I done went on bus rides with them to the Albany, we done spread to the Senate to eradicate the box. Um, my, my first year home, I dedicated my first year home working with Exodus. Um, Exodus, um, to Exodus. Yeah, Exodus, that's with Shalia. Shout out to Exodus, to J Dub and Audi and them that's there. Um, I was working with them. Um, the homie Red Rum. Um, the uh, um, um, introduced me to a, um, the organization that he was in. I forgot the name of it. Um, to G Money and them. To um, I did a few things with them. Me and Bad Vibes. Just recently went up to the Bronx to um, um, Osborne Association. We spoke to a, one of the groups that G Money, um, you know, he run up there. He case managed and all that. Um, a lot of um, high risk kids already. You know what I'm saying? Like these kids has already got cases. It's either go to the program or go to the cell. Those type of things. So I participated in that. Um, like I said, my first year home, um, I was going back and forth. Um, with Vocal, we used to um protest, um, picket. You know, I, I posted it on my page. You go to my page, Big Dude from the Block. But that's, you know, about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, I was doing that. And um, a lot of things that I wrote, like, you know, with Mikey B, we, 
we all was in prison writing. You know what right. Like, right. I saying? I bought your book, you and Ungambito. Yeah, shout out to Ungambito. Right. I bought the book. You know what I mean? From when, when I was still in the cell, just to show the support. I had my people order the book for me and all that. Um, while I was in the box. I, so I read the poetry book that y'all published and stuff like that. So I was I was proud of you then. I was bragging and telling everybody, yo, you crazy. I'm gonna put a book in his hand. That's why he's writing. <laughs> So, you know, but there's a lot of things that I wrote while I was in prison. I wrote a lot of scripts on, on entire series on, 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 on about the culture. Like, you know, I wrote an entire series about um, gang culture on the, on, on the East Coast. And, you know, I, first they started off as movies, but it's just, it just so many moving parts. And there was so many of us that had history before we even got down where we own, became UBN. You know what I mean? Before, like me and Quell and them go back to adolescent days, long before gang culture in prison. So there's a lot of things that we all, all, all did together when we was in prison. Like I said, I did a lot of time in the box, and then, and all the years that I did in the box, I spent most of that time writing and teaching. Even on the gate, like me and Mikey being them when we was in the being all right down. How many times would I them held classes on the window? We right. got all five floors. <laughs> in a man do class and we in the box. Right. You know what I mean? Two, three in the morning, we used to be blowing weed on the gate, talking about George and Jonathan. You know what I mean? When we was in the past. You know what I mean? Right. Dude, so right. it's 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 things that inspired me to write, like um rest in peace, flat lines, I mean Lewis from the Bamas. Like I wrote my first novel, my first autobiography was influenced by the little homie. When I was in Southport Box, when me and Quellenham was there in 97, when Armin and them from the Bamas was there, we, I was in, Quellenham was upstairs, we was in A Block together. Quellenham was on 11 Company and I was downstairs on um, on one company. So it's just, it's, he put, he, 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 he said, yo, dude, you need to start writing some of them stories that you be telling us. So from there, I picked up the pen and started writing, you know, and I ain't never put it down. Next thing you know, I was writing scripts for movies and things of that nature. So I brought all that home with me. You know, I bought a whole draft bag of material that I wrote. And now that I'm out here, it's, it's time to put, for people to see, hear those stories and be inspired about them. You know what I mean? Because, you know, a lot of things that I wrote about history, I wrote history books from the box. I wrote autobiographies from the box. I wrote movie scripts from the box. I wrote television series from the box. All that keep myself occupied because for so many of us that did boxes, Mikey, everybody on this panel, Mikey B, Moshe, and Quell, I personally know that we all did box time 10, 15 years and better. So I know we was in there together. So, and that's a lot of what you did most of your writing, Quell did most of his creating. And how why we did that, because so many of our homies lost their mind and do from the prisons. The mental health was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like that, 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 the place is designed to break you. So right. a lot of us that the break, we would get on the gate and we would have conversations about, but if, if, if with me, you wasn't just talking about the street and how much money you was getting on the block. I want to know what you know about George and Jonathan. Like with the brothers from the West Coast, we was right here in these East Coast prisons, particularly in New York, reading about West Coast revolutions. We was reading about West Coast revolutionaries. We knew about George and Jonathan in fact, I try to model myself after George. I wanted to be the East Coast version of George Jackson right here in New York. You know what I'm saying? So that influence about being a, 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 a revolutionized is is, is 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 the West Coast has always been on that type of time. And um that's the that's the camaraderie that I have with West Coast culture. You know what I'm saying? It's militancy, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's ability to unify as a people. Because by the time they came from out of the out of the southern state, slave states, by the time the blacks, the the, the, the freed, liberated Africans from there to the West Coast, they had to go through Indian territory, slave catchers, a bunch of racist territories to get there. So by the time they was get there, they was ready to hold it down. They was built like that. So the ones that made it to the West Coast, they was built like that to hold their own. So the things that you would say that the East Coast, West Coast would speak earlier, I wasn't able to speak on it because the brother, you know, he was giving a, 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 both of them was speaking about the influence that New York has on the West Coast and the West Coast had on New York. 
I want to take this opportunity to speak on that because um, I ain't never been on no East Coast, West Coast shit. I always felt the culture, period. You know what I mean? I always felt the swag because it was, it, it, like I said, I was introduced to West Coast culture through the Black Panther Party. You know, I was introduced, so it was easy for me to see the similarities in the game culture and the Black Panther influence. Remember Fred Hampton in Chicago, what he did? He was, he was, he, he took, he, he, remember they killed him because he was bringing the street gangs together. He was unifying them with the Black Panther philosophy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, the, so, you know, they ran down on him because of his influence on game culture. You know what I'm saying? So he was, he was unifying them to, 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 to let them know that, listen, the, those type of numbers, those build armies, and these people don't want to see that. They don't want to see that type of philosophy. Yeah. So I wrote, I wrote, I write things. That I, listen, I write those type of things that I'm speaking about right now. I incorporate that into the things, stories that I write, the stories that I tell. From personal experience and from things from that I learned from others, from the elders that taught me when I was in prison, and from me picking up a book myself and reading and teaching others from all the classes and different groups that I taught. I taught so many different groups. I even taught the European, even the white boys in oldness. You know, Moshe and Mikey B and them used to be joking. It's like, yo, dude, you teaching every group in here, even the Wiccans, all of them want me to come to their classes and teach so much. And I use that as a bridge to bring all these different groups together. Together, Because you know if I'm going to the white boys now, I'm gonna introduce them to my homies and now they know each other and they know each other. So now we all networking. We networking with how we go work together instead of against each other. You know what I'm saying? So that's the same way that I need these communities out here in the street. I'm using that same philosophy of how I was able to get so many different groups that was opposing each other at one time to work together, unified, that same, I want to use that same skill set out here on the street. Yeah, and I, I in order to do that, in, in order to do that, is through the platforms that y'all came out here and built, that y'all grind from nothing to what you have right now. You know what I'm trying to say? Y'all took that same energy and built, we locked in. We created a platform for us to be able to come up, up here, to be able to speak just how we want to talk. Say it like we mean it. Right, without being censored in anything, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so that's, that's networking. They way on the West Coast, we over here. Like I said, we're not even in the same time zones, but we able to share each other's philosophies, ideologies, you know, where we've been and where we want to go to. You know what I mean? And how can we help each other get to where we want to go to? You know, so all yeah. of us, all the brothers that working with these street organizations, working with these nonprofit organizations, doing the, the volunteer work, such as myself and everybody else on this panel, salute to everybody, salute to that. That's, 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 that's what's necessary, that's what we need to do out here, you know what I'm saying? But my thing is that I like to say it like I mean it, I don't want to be censored. The moment I feel like I'm censored, I'm going to rebel, you know? And um, that's where I'm at with it, man, that's where I'm at with it. So salute to everybody on the panel. I, I got to salute. salute. I gotta go. I just want to salute your brother before I go, brother Lorenzo. It's good meeting you, brother. KK, man, dude, uh, Moshe. I'm out. I catch y'all later. Yo, peace, bro. Peace, brother. Yo, yo, peace, Quell. Hello, Quell. Peace, Yo, 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 Mikey. I know Jake Burton couldn't come up, but the brother Big Nick was in the, in the background, right? Yeah, but he he left out too quick. He left. He left. All right, man. All right, hey, man. So, can, can I say something real quick? I'm going to say something real quick. Okay. In, in New York, right now, I'm supporting New York with 1,000%, right? My boy that runs the Slave Theater. Y'all heard of the Slave Theater in New York, right? Yeah, which one? Yeah, yeah which one? The okay. one that the black people own. They're trying to take it from them, right? So I'm trying to help fight for they can get it back and they can keep it, bro. So that's the movement I'm doing with New York. You feel what I'm saying? I'm really trying to help this dude because they're trying to take it from him. He got organizations that he working with. Y'all brothers out there, need, I need to connect y'all with this brother. It's, the Slave Theater is owned by a black family. And it's another theater they own too. It's another black theater that they're trying to like take from them. I mean, you, so, we can put together, we can put that conversation together up here. We can get the community to back us and we'll show support. Just give us the okay. and we'll connect. Yeah, yeah, okay. you know how you know, you know to get that to us. You know, you know what we got to do. Let's just tap, send that to us and you be on it. You're right now. Okay. All right.
So that's what I'm doing in New York right now, bro. Trying to say that the Slave Theater, because Hella Belafonte and all them cats was the ones that got us started in New York. You know, we need to save that type of stuff. We need to save that, that those type of things, because our kids know, would be know about this. I don't know how they even declare that a landmark already. You know what I mean? But it's the ownership you're talking about. They're trying to take it from it, it's the still black a landmark. They're trying, they're trying to, to take, take it from y'all. The original owners. They take it, yeah, yeah. They're, taking it, they're trying to take it from y'all, y'all community. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, way in right. California. You know what I'm saying? I'm way in yeah, California. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to help. Hey, I'm trying to help people in New York with that because it's history. I, I believe just, in helping. I believe in helping yeah, history. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We right here in New York. You in California? We're not even aware of that. Immigration, and we'll right. go from there. We'll all support yeah. whatever, whatever we need to do to support it. We'll do it. Like okay. All right? Send that info. The Mikey V. Mikey V. Boom, we ring that. Hey, so so check it out. I got a person that's from Brooklyn, Philadelphia, right? His name is Don Figure. He's a crip out there, but he right. believed in he believed in community revolution in progress. Community, yeah, in progress. That's what he. That's what that's what he owns. Okay. He don't like the, he don't like the crips in New York. That's what we. He own. don't like. Them. You get what I'm saying? So y'all need to get with this brother. Yeah. That's his movement. All right. All you gotta okay. do is up. Um, I'm gonna we'll take it from me. Y'all got any last words? We going on three hours tonight. Y'all got any last All words? All right. Well, but salute because it's time. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna roll out. <laughs> roll up. <laughs> Bro, salute, y'all. Salute. Y'all. My last words. Salute, KK. What's the last words? Um, salute, salute, Stoke. Y'all ain't from the west. Yeah. Man, I, I, only got, I only got one thing to say. Yo, next time we're in New York, man, pull up. From the west to the east, man. Y'all already know what we nation, man. We nation. Definitely. You already know what we're doing, we man. We nation, for sure. We nation. Right. Free, 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 Anyway, Why you up tonight? Free pistol P. Oh, make sure, make sure y'all tap in the prison talk, man. Subscribe to prison talk with uh Jay Burton, with uh Joey P, and damn homie and them, man. Make sure y'all tap in, man. Subscribe yeah, to prison talk. Salute. Yo, peace, bro. Yo, Yo peace, big bro. whack, man. Yo, peace, y'all. Thank y'all for coming up, man. Zo, man, thank you for coming up, big bro. For sure, for sure. I love y'all, brothers. Yo, love you too, Yo, bro. Me. Me. Yo, man. Yo, man. Another great one, man. Salute to them brothers, man. Big Wag. Hey, yo, we need Jay Burton. Funk flip. Oh. Yo, listen, man. We did. This was an amazing show, man. Salute to them brothers, man. Salute. You know, Shaquel, man, do. Yeah. Um, Jay Burton, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Salute to the bros, man. We couldn't really hear Jay Burton tonight, but we get Jay Burton up here another night. You know, that's the bro. Um, he had a little technical, he had technical difficulties tonight. But we had a great show, man. We got a lot of history, we got a lot of lessons. Hope y'all learn something. Hope y'all see, you know, even though these brothers had you know check it past and they did what they did, you know, and they told their stories of their past and their affiliations and all the stuff they were down with. Look what these OGs is at and what they're doing today. Right. Understand that. We're trying to make sure that y'all see that picture and that we are not all caught in the past. You know what I'm saying? We're thinking about the future and we out here working and doing the right thing in our communities. You right. know what I'm saying? We're not using this to, to, to glorify or glamorize gangbanging, but to tell the real stories and to use the information and the stuff that we learned in those gangs to what benefit our communities and these kids nowadays because they're going through the same stuff that we went through that got us all this time in prison. Nice. You see what I'm saying? We they going through the same exact things, they're doing the same exact things that we did in the same exact communities. In the same communities, they doing the same things that we did. So it's important for what I tell them is this: don't make the mis don't make the bad decisions that I made that we made. Be smarter, be better than us, because all we did was did all that time, and we come out here and we doing the same thing that we should have did from the beginning. That's we doing the same. We should have went to college. We should have educated ourselves. We That's should have got good jobs. We should have connected to the community resources. This is all. This is what I tell them. 
I messed up because, and don't get me wrong, in the 90s, a lot of the resources that they have now, they didn't have that in the 90s. The money they're giving out, the job they're giving out for, um, you know, people that's just as impact, people that's having a hard time acclimating themselves to society, um, coming out of gangs. They didn't have the opportunities. They're giving everybody jobs now. I'm getting everybody jobs. You see, everybody that wants a job is getting a job now. I don't make a difference in your background or if you was in prison or what you did. They don't care about that no more. If you're willing to work and you're willing to, um, you know, show your skills and be this better person, then you could do that out here today. If y'all don't, if y'all don't got nobody else to connect y'all, hit us up. If y'all in New York or the New York area, or if y'all in California, we'll connect y'all with the people that can help y'all. If we can't do it ourselves, if we can't get y'all the resources ourselves, y'all can hit me up on Instagram Monday through Friday, four thirty to eight thirty. I'm working. So hit me up on Instagram. I'm going to check you and I'll, I'll link you in. I'll, ta I'll tap you with the jobs in your community. I'll help you find them. That's my job. That's what I do. It's my job to help you get jobs. It's my my job to help you get housing. Same thing I know for, for Moshe and KK with his nonprofit organization. So y'all can reach out to us at any time. You know what I'm saying? But it's important for y'all to understand that we're showing y'all a circle here on We Lock. You see what I'm saying? We're showing y'all a circle. We, we, get, we getting right back to where we're supposed to be at and we connecting all these dots. You know what I'm saying? And we trying to bring all the people up with us. We ain't leaving nobody behind. We working out here in these same communities, you know, that we did a lot of the damage in. Go ahead, go, go ahead, bro. Y'all, we gonna close this out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, nah, nah, yeah. One, one of the things, man, that really, like, like some of the things you had touched on, man, we was going through the same things, the same actual struggles. And I was looking at that timeline and, and when they were saying it. And one thing that wasn't brought up, I was gonna bring them, was gonna bring it up, but I was like, I'll wait till the end when we wrapping it up, was the um the Cointel Pro program, right? And how big, how big a part that they played, man, when you had these organizations, like, you know, some of us, a lot of us said the same influence, uh, the Panthers. You know what I'm saying it's like, like, was a lot of influence in that one time, you know, they were trying to unite, they were trying to bring a lot of brothers from these street organizations together. And when they wanted to stop that, bro, and cause that the divide, that was a huge blow, a huge blow, man. And I was sitting there seeing and realizing how big a blow they gave us with that. Because right after that, even when the brother was saying, you know, we started spreading out, but you know, we started spreading because you know, dudes was, was hustling, dudes was getting money. You know what I'm saying? The drugs came apart. And that was that was another factor that came into play, man. And and as it, the years was going by, it just seemed like our leaders just kept it was becoming less and less uh, uh powerful. You know what I'm saying? Or or you could say more and more negatively influenced, you know, with a lot of the leaders that was coming. Due to the Cointel Pro program, the uh, drugs that was being poured in our communities, all the weapons that was popping up in, in our communities, the media-based programs, the propaganda that was being put out, and it just caused a huge division to really stop us from coming together. But one of the things that he also said, though, he's talking about with the social media thing now and how it's being utilized, when it's utilized in the right way, is that it gives you the ability to not only share information, but tap in with people everywhere. I mean, and, and this is what we use and we locked in for now, like nigga, being able to tap in and get the world with everybody everywhere. So no more, we can't be isolated no more where you can't reach out and somebody going to tell me something about somebody in L.A. Or, 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 or Atlanta or even overseas. You know what I'm saying even overseas because we can get to them. We can get to them. You know what I'm saying? To have to pull up and find out actually what's going on and build and, and, and move forward. And I love it. Tonight was monumental, bro. I, I, I love it, man. Just, just, just how brothers represented themselves, man, and just showing what dudes come from. I mean, Yo, young friends, it's for anybody. I you KK. The programs for anybody. I, I, I'm a reentry. I'm a reentry case manager, but I help anybody that need a job. I can get you the help that you need. I'm gonna help anybody. I ain't gonna turn nobody down. They need a job, and I can help. So hit me up. Uh. Man, with that, man, it was just beautiful, Mikey, man. I, 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 I loved it, man. I wish the bro was on free, uh, Jay Burt. Um, you know, I know, I know, I know he had a lot to contribute, so we definitely gonna have to be in the yeah, bro. Up, we can do a yeah. part three. There's no biggie. We bro, can do a part three because so be 
you know, um, salute to Soul B. So Soul B was supposed to be here. He had he was out of he was out of state. He had um he had some phone technicalities as well. So salute to Soul B. You know what I'm saying? We can do a part three with Jay Bird. Yeah, exactly. And, and everybody part- kept saying shit in the thing about whack 100. That ain't whack 100. That's the real whack. That's, That's big, big whack. whack. That's big That's whack. Big whack. Big whack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did two real big, kind of real big, big homie, man. He did, he did you know what I'm saying? Five years, right? Yeah. Hell uh, yeah. When he was, when he, when he was part of the gang, what's that, was he? Pyro. He was Pyro. That's, That's big rap. Yeah. Double OG from the Pyro rules. He did 27 years in prison. Yeah, nah, that's, 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 that's big whack. That's, um, that's, that he from Fruit Town. He from Fruit Town. He from Fruit Town Pyro. Fruit Town Pyro. Yeah, Fruit Town Pyro, yeah. Fruit Town, Pyro, yeah. <laughs> nah, ain't no, ain't no, nah, ain't no, ain't no games with that. That's the big homie right there. That's so, the big homie right there. Yeah. You know, so, yo, so we know we really tapped in East to the West, man, and y'all see what the big, really, the real big homies is doing out here in this communities. So y'all don't got, y'all don't got, right now y'all can't front and tell these youths anything else. We got the real big homies from the West Coast and the real big homies from the East Coast that's out here working in these communities. So there's no reason for y'all not to be getting in line and finding out what y'all really supposed to be doing for yourselves and y'all communities, bro. What you see now is the leaders turning back to what these organizations, these street, these street organizations really were supposed to be doing from the beginning. From and the beginning. From the beginning. So now they're setting the record straight and tapping back in. 